there were some who believed he had star potential, some who believed he would be an average player, others who believed he would be a bust. I think everything went exactly the way that it was supposed to. Good evening. So Hi. when you see somebody like a Johnny Football be at the top, you're like, how does this guy not have a perspective on what Heisman he's doing? Winner. You know, the rise was really quick and rapid and fast, and everybody yeah. wanted a piece of it and the energy that came with it. And it never once in my mind clicked that, you know, this is what this guy is living and dreaming for, to come in and just get in the building to make any amount of money, and you have this opportunity that you're squander so was it a vicious circle of being in something realizing okay this isn't for me every single feeling that i had when i was in cleveland came right back to me and i'm like i don't love this whatsoever at the end of the day you're just like you just have, have illusions about like what life should have been based on what everybody else perceives you as so if the ncaa wants to take my fucking nine and four season away and my chick-fil-a bowl against duke fucking blow me <laughs> are we rolling or what Fucking roll, boss. boss. And we gotta do the click the button, and dude. Already rolling. We're good. Well, why in the thing go and tell me how much time we're at? Because right now I think we're at zero. Right now we're we're literally paused in space to me. Love, but the thing doesn't happen. Hey, okay, boss. Goes. I respect you keeping your composure back there. Yeah. We gotta keep our composure. Yeah. He's like, you're rolling, man. No good need looking, to yell at me in front of the new yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, no need to yell at people. Good looking Chuck, <laughs> Chuck Bud you guys got over yeah, there. Dude, um, yeah, dude. We don't like to give free shout outs out here, but you slap the boys <laughs> on it. It's no longer a free shout out. It's officially go. a collab there going for go. Chuck Buds. I think we gotta let some fly soon, buddy. You guys are, you guys crushed the advertisement for that too. Like every yeah. every time I see one of y'all, it's clicking. You got some girl with some bolt ons fucking snapping a can off yeah. going after yeah. it. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's interesting. It's, uh, I would say I credit it to TikTok. A lot of our growth, like TikTok's up, that thing does all boomed that. off on TikTok. Just some like kids. There's like sub cultures on TikTok where there's like this drinking culture mm -hmm. that I didn't wasn't aware of. You know? Right. But we started like we went from doing the flash sales on them where I would we were literally in my like fucking house in L.A. Mm. I had assembly line of like five of my buddies putting these things together, like these just assembling them roughing it figuring it out when did it somebody's start somebody's cutting the strings somebody's tying Literally. the knots yeah. going no down shit. the assembly line yeah yeah and um and then we would do like we just crank out like 2000 it would take us like three weeks <laughs> and then they'd sell out but we were i was marketing the whole time in a discreet way but i was just like kept doing them on my stories they'd be like what the fuck is that thing you know mm. and by the time we put them on sale they would just they would fly so then the first time when we started mass producing like probably about three, four weeks into it, for whatever reason, it went from like, you know, five, three, four thousand dollars a day in sales to like just quadruple. And we had no idea why. It turns out like some big, you know, they're like 21 year old kids, like frat, like kind of fratty kids. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like uh, one of them- Put some music behind it. Yeah, but yeah. Just like, a lot of his music too. They just like, sm they're just smashing beers. It's a twofer. It. His yeah. music and he's, the choke. Yeah. It just became a thing. It just became a thing on TikTok. And then we just- when did you start making them? Um, we've been doing, we've been producing them for about a year, working on them. Like I acquired, I acquired this. So this kid hit me up. He was a college kid making them in his dorm. Just had like a few of them, you know, but it wasn't even really selling them yet. Yeah. And, uh, and hit me <laughs> and hit me and go. Got to work through the first year around here. We'll apologize work, for we'll that. Work through it. We'll work through it. We're not a logistics <laughs> company either, man. Yeah. We'll work through it. Um, but yeah, man, like hit me up, was like, hey, man, I got this thing. I've been trying to get in front of you. I, I happened to see the DM. I said, yeah, send them out, you know? Sat in my kitchen in LA for like, in a box for like four weeks. And then we're about to go on tour, having a, a late night festivity over there. And people busted them out. And I started seeing everyone do it. And people were like, oh, like, oh, like even like, you know, LA people, which isn't really like, wouldn't like set. Right. It wasn't really like a drinking culture out there. Like, you like Nashville, not even close, you know. So and Nashville just, different, Oof. different. Love it out here. Yeah, Oof. yeah. But even just seeing them, you know, I come from kind of like the drinking culture world, you know. So just seeing that reaction, I was like, man, this might be something. So I ended up flying the kid out. We were going on tour. I flew the kid out. We met, and then I just slowly like acquired the whole company from him. You know, he's he's in on it partially, but. Yeah, Was he get like royalties? Does he have yeah, any equity no, in the company? Has, I, I can't, he has some points on the company. Yeah. You know, I got him a million dollars for it, which he, you know, he hadn't made any. Yeah, he's in college, a million dollars. Like you make it sound like it's, right. he gave him $10 and a pack of chewing gum. Yeah. A million dollars is a lot of fucking money. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. That's a good it deal. Was just, it was, and you know, it's it's vested and he has he has uh, points on the company and shit. So mm -hmm. it's it's a great deal for both of us. But man, it was, it was pretty, so pretty lucky. Like 
Talk about just like opening up your phone. There's a no doubt because you're like, oh man, this dude's got something. Yeah, right? and he, oh, has, he has like that kind of like he's like a special kid. He has like that little like inventor's trait, you know? Like you yeah. know, some people have those. Like yeah, see like something that. makes it, he yeah, puts it together. He's, like he's, yeah. just, he's just like put this little idea. Together. You close with the kid, or is the kid yeah. like a yeah, oh, he's yeah. like he, that? He actually was out in L.A. Like we became buddies. He, yeah, he's out in L.A. I think he's going back to Illinois. He's from Illinois, really? small town. Where do you go to school? Couldn't fucking tell you. Small, right. small school in Illinois, but you know, just man, got lucky. So yeah, that's awesome. It's been Good nice. That kid, it's been dude. nice. We got to sell some. We, I got some. I got some. Um, got some barstool ones doing Brianna. Do you know Brianna Chicken Fries? Yeah, the chicken, the, the one that she's kind of new there. Yep. Yeah. We're doing one with her. We're doing one with Dana. Like some. Yeah. Dana beer. Smart that's move. A, that's gotta be a, a big move, move to do. A, yeah, big beer guy. Start with those guys. How, so you do? You follow Dana? Do you believe that he's back? <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of a big thing for whatever reason. Do you think he's Dan back. is here? Yeah, he's here. He's back. He's, 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 he's back to being back, relevant. Man. Yeah, he's back. I love that. That's good. I like to see that kind of sport. I don't know. Yeah, dude. He, I'm he a fan of Dana too. Man. I just don't he know what, what becomes back. In Scottsdale. It was oh, for real? He's a good time, man. We would have expected him. Yeah, he yeah. seems like a beauty. I don't know if he's back. I don't know if back for He's somewhere, though. But I love, like, honestly, he's such a sweet, like, sweet, nice guy, too. Yeah, he is. Yeah. What an interesting way to describe another man. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. Just a sweetheart. A sweet, sweetheart. Nice I love that. If too. someone called me, if someone's like, yeah, Taylor, yeah, he's a sweetheart. I'd be like, well, that's kind of, that's sweet of them it's to nice. say. Yeah. Nice Super nice yeah. to say, dude. You know, probably in your profession, you're not going to get that uh, very often. No. And also my personality off the field kind of yeah, matches everything. I, was I, was not, say, I don't yeah, think anybody would really, that, but, uh, <laughs> would really make me uh, call me sweet or anything like that. But, uh, oh, okay. So we're, this is Busting with the Boys and it's sponsored by Chevrolet. It's brought to you by Chevrolet. We are sitting here with the Ball Don't Lie crew. Mm -hmm. That is Just Mike and Johnny Manziel. A lot of you guys know Johnny Manziel. We were actually in the same draft class. 2014, baby. 2014. Uh, kind of in a weird way in our college, not like kind of like we were both were like the all American thing together and then at the same draft together. So I'm super excited to get into all that. Um, no. what, oh, we have to do the ad yeah, real quick. I it. thought, where's the alarm? The the Chevy oh, one, no. since we're brought to you by Chevy, we always do my Okay, so we're brought to you bottom. by Chevy. Okay, so about to get dundant real fast on you. Chevrolet, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Silverado is, unless you didn't know before, strong, advanced, dependable, and hardworking. Silverado is dependable, like I've said for the third time, like people, like the people who drive them. The design is big, bold, and commanding. This truck just turns heads, gives you a kink, dude. You have a big bender, hit the, ch the chug button one too many times, you hit the kink because you saw the Silverado, dude. That's what Chevrolet does. <laughs> for you there's so many things you can do with the chevrolet dude you go in you go in to watch a football game you go in to do this well go ahead and tell us what we can do with the, with the chevrolet with this with the silverado tailgating hauling maybe you got a new big screen tv couch tailgate equipment whatever it may be towing maybe you got a big boat that you want to show off off-roading moving day helping out your friends or a family member road trips guys if you're a lunch pail guy if you're a chug bud guy you belong in a chevy silverado you belong in one go to a dealership near you let them know that the boy sent you video it mm -hmm. video it with the chug bud as well and uh yeah Experience the USA in a Chevrolet. Yeah. Back to the episode. Boom. <laughs> just always say back to Chevrolet. The episode. Back to the episode, even though we never went anywhere. We sat here the whole time and we made them sit, wasted their time. So yeah, uh, 2014 draft class, dude. Um, super cool college career. Obviously one of the most dynamic football players to ever play. Being in college at the same time as you, me and Will watching you. I can't imagine what that was like in college. Let's start there. Let's start at college. For you, take me in the beginning. You're a freshman. Don't know which way's up, and then hit me. Obviously, the next year you win the Heisman, correct? Yeah, it was uh, it was quick, man. Crazy story. I I graduated early, so I got on campus. You know, and at the beginning of January, this is anybody else does when they first get there, especially being the young guy in a locker room. Um, fucking lost, bro. Yeah, no idea which way is up, how to get here. Just literally a fucking punk ass kid trying to get into a bar and maybe drink a beer away from your parents <laughs> for the first time. But uh, yeah. Graduate early, go to AM. I redshirted my first year. Uh, we were in the Big 12 as well, which was a big, uh, big difference over the years. Getting to redshirt and travel with the team the first year and go to places like Ames, Iowa, and all in Lubbock and all these places. Nebraska. And then to go the next year. Nebraska <laughs> came to us. <laughs> but uh, then the next year, we're playing in the SEC and obviously getting a chance to actually go out and rip it up and play a little bit. It's just completely different getting to see the, uh, the, the, the two conferences that way. But you know, funny story, I haven't told a lot of people before, um, you know, so I go into spring football that year. This um, is your redshirt freshman year? 12. Yeah, this is my redshirt freshman year. First chance to 
get a chance to, you know, get any reps, get some, get some playing time, anything in the spring. Had as about of abysmal of a fucking spring as you could have. Throwing Perfect. picks all day in practice. Can't run around. Can't do my thing. Just feel cooped up. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the spring, fourth on the depth chart. Not even close to having a chance to compete for the starting job. Just fucking struggling. Um, somewhere between that time, between the end of spring ball and uh, fall camp, you know, I go out, have a couple too many red, white, and blue Budweiser's on the 4th of <laughs> July weekend. <laughs> and I got caught with three fake IDs um, in my wallet. It's this thing where you go online, type in all your info, and then this little toy car would show up. It would come in like a toy from China, and then you'd open it up, and underneath you'd take out the batteries of the car, and there's your fake IDs. No shit. Oh, shit. That's the, the uh, laminated uh, and everything? Sitting, oh, perfect. Really, really good. Had to get to Louisiana because Texas ones were really hard to this, say. So I hate cutting you off, but why three? Um, it, like, came in a, it was a package deal. I think it was like 300. Like trading three. cards? You lost you get a pack of trading well, cards? The, the cool thing was when you go to a, like a gas station or something, you hand them an ID and the guy knows it's not you or knows it's fake, you can just walk out without having to try and get it back. Yeah, snap it from him and get you out of there? Hit the hit the right straight out the door and just, just take off and just beat it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that little incident happens and I'm fourth on the depth chart. Recently walking out of uh, Bryan College Station Jail and, uh, you know, looking pretty bleak. And this is July. Fast forward 11 days into, you know, college football training camp and play great. Win the job in 11 days. We play Florida the first game. And then, you know, Heisman season kind of goes from there. It's, so wait, hold on. That was the year you won the Heisman? Yeah. So you won the job in 11 days. 11 days. How do you, how do you go up the depth chart? One position. They, uh, I credit the Cliff Kingsbury, man. That's a yeah. guy who uh, really changed my life for the better. I mean, he was like, listen, we're going to get your feet wet in the spring. You're going to learn the system. You're going to do this. But, you know, he whether we had a depth chart or not, he wasn't grading me off any of that. He was grading everybody what we had in the fall and what you look like coming back after summer workouts. So, you know, he's I hang out with him a lot now. He's obviously in Arizona with the mm-hmm. Cardinals. I'm, you know, I'm a Scottsdale guy, so I see him a lot. And he's always told me that uh, you know, he wanted me to be his guy. He saw a lot in me. He watched me. Uh, he's from New Braunfels in uh, Texas, and I played right outside of there. So um, just a guy that believed in me, gave me a chance, played really good in spring ball, and life changed in three months from there. How- part, part of that story you're missing out on, uh, I think, is you got in trouble, and then you, you ended it- up having to run like a – well, oh, that, I mean, yeah, that is a that is a big story. There's two, there's two that other part little of it, pieces though, of that. You told like, us something about online. So yeah. when I got in trouble, Texas A and M is a is a big school of like honor code and ethics and things like that. To where if you get in trouble, even outside of campus or just in the town of Bryan College Station, um, they pretty much send your case to a review board of the school. So win the job in eleven days, and then the day after, um, I get named the starter. I go to this meeting in front of this review board for my behavior or whatever. Mm-hmm. I go through the meeting, tell them, tell them what happened, obviously apologize. And um, they suspended me from college athletics for a year and put me on academic suspension. No oh, shit. So when the job one day, next day, go to this meeting, think I'm just going to you know slap on the wrist, something's going to happen to getting completely banned and not even be able to play intramural athletics. <laughs> Which uh, would, if I'm not going to be able to play start in the SEC, I may as well go to the rack and fucking tear it up. Yeah, no question. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that happens. I have to meet with Coach Salmon. He's pretty much like every day we have a practice, even if it's in the morning or in the afternoon. You run ten gassers before the practice, and you run fucking ten after. Yeah. So and you two, practice. Yeah, and you practice. Brutal. So they're fucking wearing me out, but. I ended up leading the SEC in rushing that year, uh-huh. uh, rushing Todd Gurley somehow. Um, and I think a lot of it was beneficial from that punishment. I think I was in the best shape on the team because I'm out there running 120 dying. half gassers a week, half yeah. gassers back. So this and happened. Forth. This happened. Your redshirt freshman year, your name is starter, and mm-hmm. then he had to spend it for a year. Well, how did they rescind that? That I had suspension? to collect a ton of letters from people within the like, um, like our academic office or the place, our study hall, our teachers, mm-hmm. coaches. And had to collect probably 20 letters, family members back home from high school. No and, way. Uh, they all wrote letters for me and probably got about 20 or 30 letters and sent them into the review board. And I went back up for another review and they uh, rescinded it to like a, a lower level of academic probation so I could play sports. Did you do that or did like the school like? You know, that's a good question. Something I never really wanted to find out. I was really nervous, man. I'm just a kid trying to ever touch the field in the SEC, yeah. much less 
you know, we're playing Florida the first game at home in front of 100,000 people. New conference for us. This is all I could have ever dreamed for. And I get named the starter, and the next day they tell me to fucking, you're out. Kick rocks. Yeah, pretty much. Sheesh. Do you feel like, uh, like you're obviously running 20 gassers a day to, to continue to be the starter. Like when you got in trouble and you're having to go through all this stuff, like it seemed like you were pretty remorseful. Like you wanted to like, yo, this isn't, this isn't who I want to be. This isn't what I want to do going into, unless you were just like, like fucking grunting those gassers out every day, still thinking like, you know, I'm still going to be fucking, I think, you know, I think, carry I think, the it, ego made, with I think you. it made me, be- I think it made me better for sure. It, um, that period allowed me to put myself in a position to have success that I did that year in college. I think um, I've always worked better with somebody being jumping down my throat and being on my ass because I tend to get lazy and not do shit that I don't want to do. Yeah. I'm a punk ass. But, uh, you know, I, I think it I think it kept me in line and got me to a point where I really went and focused on trying to be really good at football and play well and live my dream type of thing. And you know, that's what I got to do that year. And I think it was a great stepping stone at all. I look back now and say that there were no accidents in, in my life, even with what happened in Cleveland or this and that. I think everything went exactly the way that it was supposed to. I think there's other things out there that I'm meant for. And I think fate has worked its way in a way that things have gone exactly the way that they should have. Yeah. You think things went exactly the way it was supposed to go? I do. That's interesting. It's, it's the it, only, it only, only reason why I say that is because, like, things go the way they're supposed to go when they're con- when the things that are uncontrollable happen. Of course. But the things that you, and we'll get with this a little farther down the road, no. when you got to the NFL, like, everything, all the actions were controllable. Yeah, probably so. So when you say, like, it's it's all what did you say? It happens for a reason or, yeah, or it's all, it's all, suppo- it's no, it's supposed it to happen the way it's supposed to. So if you went back, you wouldn't do anything different. No. You do it the same way. You wouldn't do nothing different. I wouldn't. I, I, uh, for four years, five years of my life, I went through the roller coaster of, um, man, I guess really depression after I got cut in LA or it got cut from Cleveland and moved to LA. I went through waking up every day, wanting to have a time machine to go back to our draft in 2014 and maybe, tell this team to get fucked or go to another team or go in the second round or work through every single scenario in my head. And I think I've got to the point now where maybe I just really didn't ever love football to the point of what it takes to be successful in the NFL. Yeah. So when you, when you went from the Browns, where'd you go from there? You went to the CFL or XFL? Or oh, I took a year off and then I went to uh, the CFL and then went and played in the AAF in the same year. And when, how long did it take you to realize that maybe I didn't love football the way I thought I loved football. When I walked back into the locker room in Canada for the first time, I was really excited going to the press conference the first couple of days on the field. But when the grind really started and the, you know, the normal workload and yeah. I mean, and it, it's a 30% workload in the CFL compared to what we do in the NFL. Yeah. It's like you're, OTAs every day, right? It's pretty much like you're in the building at nine o'clock, you're done at one o'clock, you get free time to do whatever you want. So, you're, mm. I mean, you spend a couple extra hours in there, you're done in at nine, you're done at three. Compared to what we do on a Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever day in the league where it's you know early season, 6.30 in the morning until 8 o'clock at night or something like that. So when I moved and went back into uh, the locker room in Canada and started getting back into it again, I felt the exact same way. Every single feeling that I had when I was in Cleveland um, came right back to me, and I'm like, I don't love this whatsoever. You don't want to do this? Mm-mm. But you went you – went, uh, Canadian League, you went to that Spring League. And, I, and then and I went to the XFL. AAF and, and the AAF in Memphis. So was it a vicious circle of being in something, realizing, okay, this isn't for me, leaving it, being like, okay, this isn't better my identity for X amount of years, my father, my the people I love think this is what I'm supposed to be doing, so you get back into it. Yeah. And then the, it was a vicious circle over and over again. A lot of it was now I sit back and reflect and call it what it is, but it, uh, for like a long point in time. I didn't accept it for what it was. I was, you know, listening to outside people or go back and watch an old highlight tape and be like, fuck, man, I can go in the backyard right now and do the same shit and throw a ball around the same way. So it just, uh, it took a lot of time and a lot of just, I've got to a point now in my life where I'm able to really reflect and sit back on things and my mood has changed. My, my, my lifestyle is a little bit kind of the same with what I do and how I live my life, Mm -hmm. but just the way I think and the way that I uh, interact with people and, and the way where my life is now, I'm completely different than I was. And I think a lot of it has is, is come because of acceptance. You seem much more calm. I didn't know you like that. But in 2012 at the Walter Payton thing, being around you and admiring you from afar, like that's Johnny Manziel. You know what I'm saying? You and I are both all Americans, but I'm looking at this guy going, 
fuck, that's the, you know, that's whatever. And I'm in the class with him. I'm in the class with yeah, this yeah, fucking dude. Yeah. And then you go to the bar and you're fucking, you're holding court, dude, and like all, everyone's around you. And I'm looking at you like, God, I want to do that. I want to be a part of that shit. And so, but it, your energy was so high and you seem like you're so on to the next thing. Looking back on it, obviously yeah, at the time I'm of like course. this, I want to do that shit too. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I was getting just as much trouble on a way smaller scale. Yeah, that's kind of uh, what, what Bob don't lie. Like I've been, I've been buddies with him for through the, uh, more or less. When was it? Probably 2014. Yeah, I mean, even probably even before that. A I've bit. known him a long time, and that was kind of the idea. You know, we talked about this for a while. I just wanted people to see the the side of him that you know. There's there's a lot of connotations, obviously, that have traveled with the story, and it's obviously a notorious story. Like just you know, what he's gone through and what to, what it looked like from afar. But knowing him then and being with him through it, you know, and just in L.A., we were neighbors for a while, I would see it. There'd be times where, like, man, like, you know, I didn't want to, like, we'd be we'd be buddies, but, I, you know, I'd want to stay. I'd want to let him work through what he needed to work through. Mm-hmm. And then it got to a point where I'm like, I could feel that there was a level of peace where, like, he had clarity. He went and did Canada, like. You know, I remember we were doing a comeback season thing. I did some branding stuff for him then, too. And he didn't have, like, clarity on... He didn't have closure or clarity on it. And th- I feel like those were necessary steps for him just as a friend. Like, go look, go get that last nut up. Like, see if see if you can do it again. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, does it still get your fucking dick hard or not? You know what I mean? And then I remember talking to him. He's like, man, it just doesn't. You know? And then what ball don't lie, what I think that... What that real undertone of that is just like when you ask him that question like would you do it different Mm. you know the realization we've had a lot of these late night conversations and talks about these types of things and that was kind of the main realization it's like dude if it's not in your heart and your mind and your soul like your your god gifts you know he's god gifted talented at football right but at some point if it doesn't get your rocks off and it's not what you want to do that's not meant to be it's not fucking supposed to do yeah that's your life you know what i mean that that's what i wanted him to share about you know just from that perspective it's just like man at some point what is it really about mm. you're living your life so if you don't get up and man like yo i gotta i know obviously it takes a lot of mental fortitude we talk about fortitude all the time like to be an amazing quarterback in the nfl i mean i, I only know what he tells me but just the level of preparation yeah you guys the, the the level of dedication it takes and if it's not in your heart to do that like for anything in any walk of life you know what i mean that's how i feel like it's not in your heart of hearts to go pursue that with all of your passion or as much passion as it takes and it's not your path you know it's not it's not the path that you're supposed to walk forever you mm-hmm. know and that's how i felt and i think that's what that's really what like i wanted to share in the ball don't lie scenario it's just like i want him to share that side of it it's just like dude that was the big thing that took off ball don't lie that was the reason why you guys want to start something i mean we uh we sit and have a bunch of talks like this just about life and being two guys around the same age trying to just figure it out like a lot of mike's music has been one step after another learning as you go and i felt like you know i learned more um you know, the rise was really quick and rapid and fast and everybody wanted a piece of it. And the energy that came with it was just through the roof. Mm -hmm. You know, it was crazy to think back and say maybe eight or nine years ago, there was only a couple athletes maybe on the face of the earth, at least maybe in the United States who had, who maybe I was as famous as like maybe me, LeBron, Tom Brady, like a couple other guys. No, you're up there for sure. Yeah. Johnny it, it, It was, it was really up there. And, uh, you know, just looking back on it now, it's crazy to say, and not a lot of people have underst- understood this when I've said it, but like I've been longing and, and trying to get back to a sense of normalcy. Mm-hmm. And life went from really normal, a kid from fucking Kerrville, Texas, that nobody knew to a Heisman a year later to the whole rise going to the NFL and dealing with that. My whole mission in the last couple of years has been trying to get back to a sense of normalcy and just feeling like one of the boys again. Yeah, that's why I want to come on the bus talking like I just want to be one of the fucking bros. When he's walking the streets, guys ask me while we're here in Nashville. It's like, yo, what the fuck are you doing out here, man? I'm like, dude, it's Memorial Day weekend. I'm trying to come out, you know, have some fun with my boys the same way you are. Yeah, trying to, trying to just have a good time. That's it. There's nothing else to it. Just a guy trying to have a beer at Florida Georgia Line Bar and eat some queso. We, <laughs> we had we had a lot. Yeah, too. Like, and it's like, you know, would you do anything different? Like living in regret and all that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, like as a human being, you're going to sit there like, I wish I had my experience now that I did back then. And I just don't. Because if you're if you're sitting there and living in regret all the time 
and you just like live in the past at the end of the day you're just like you just like have illusions about like what life should have been based on what everybody else perceives you as It'll you know what i mean crazy. It'll, yeah it really it's really what um drove a lot of my mental health struggles and a lot of things it took me years man i went through a point where my schedule flipped around and i would couldn't sleep throughout the middle of the night and i would sleep during the middle of the day and this would go on for weeks at a time and i would just beat myself up every day watching guys who i went up against in college or friends with and you can't help but almost get to a, a point of like envy or jealousy at times watching guys go out and live the dream of what yeah. you thought you were supposed to do mm -hmm. but i can honestly sit back and say today that i'm happier with less i'm happier without all the fame and i'm happier on the path that my life is going and i and i don't know where the fuck it's going yeah. i'm cool with it mm -hmm. i'm rocking with everything that comes my way and just kind of piece by piece day by day just Figuring it out. Something will come. Do you know, so the, as far as like a career, do you know where you want to go from here? You know, luckily, you know, in our draft class in 2014, if you're a first round pick, you got to make a decent, pretty amount of change. Uh -huh. and, and a big uh, Nike deal too, right? Had a nice old Nike deal. Got some great, uh, great sponsorships. And then, you know, been free freelance in the last couple of years. I did a Barstool a podcast for, or a podcast with Barstool for a year on college football. I've been just doing some stuff here and there, and, you know, just kind of trying to figure it out. But, you know, I'm working on this this golf thing. You know, I'm I'm really addicted to the golf life right now. Oh, you're yeah. a beast like that. I'm about a zero handicap. I'm getting better. I've knocked it down probably ten strokes in the last year. So uh I'm addicted to it, man. It's something it's the best rush that I've got in sports since playing football. Mm -hmm. I feel it makes me feel a little bit of the same way. If we're out all night partying or whatever, I have eight AM tea time. I don't miss very many, probably zero of those eight AM tea times, no matter how how yeah. banged up and hurt I am. It's just looking back at it, and we've been talking about this, is like it's something that gets me out of bed in the morning. And there for a long time there wasn't a lot of anything that would get me out of bed in the morning. Depression will do that to you. No doubt. Depression's a real thing for sure. William, what a perfect stopping point. <clears throat> All right, give it to me. Here, boys. Mm. Oh, bro, this is this is light. I love it. This is yeah. light, bro. Smoke you out. We'll get the truth out of anybody. <laughs> shout out Bare Bottom Clothing. No free shout outs. Um, the return to travel is hot finally start. here. I know, I know. But before start. you start packing for your next adventure, don't forget to check out the boys at Bare Bottom Clothing. Their adventure-ready shorts, swim trunks, and tees are perfect for breaking out of your hibernation without breaking the bank. They feel the great. Boy, yeah, I was going to say. I'm a big fan. Talk about I your personal I put them on. Experience. They have a nice little cotton feel. The boys, they're not big, but they're mine. And when they're in there, they feel like they're at home. They got the plasma screen TV, a fridge. It's a beautiful thing. I love them to death. <laughs> Stay up there. Stay up there. Holy shit. Um... Very, oh yeah, starter. That was a starter idea. Yeah, I see what you're doing. I see. Yeah, what you're fair doing. enough. All right, uh, um, additional points. The uh, internet's them. best deal point. on high quality and versatile menswear. You can get two pairs of their best selling stretch shorts, plus their anti microbial microbial and moisture wicking tech tee for under one hundred dollars. Price that's right. Pair, that's two pairs of shorts and a shirt. Yep, for a hundred bucks. Under a hundred dollars, not a hundred. Under a hundred dollars. Uh, price right, price right every day, so you don't have to wait around all year for sales. Over ten thousand five star reviews from guys that have already made bare bottom threads their everyday go to. Weird flex. For every item purchased, bare bottom will donate a protective mask to a first responder, teacher, or someone in need. Right now, our listeners get free shipping on the first order of these super comfortable threads at barebottomclothing.com with code Bussin. B U S S I N. Go to barebottom barebottomclothing.com. We're going to spell again. That's B-E-A-R, like the animal, Rawr. bottomclothing.com, and use code BUSSIN to get free shipping on your first order. Back to this episode. People pay a lot of money for those ads. That's great. You got, to put, you got to put your heart and soul into them. You know you what I'm saying? You got to be on the spot, and it's, you yeah, got to go one there. take. I'll yeah. tell you, I am a terrible reader. And you guys will probably find out in the next ad. <laughs> Microbial was... It, it, Dude, that was tough. <laughs> I was staring at that. What sucks, yeah. what sucks I, I had that last week, words. and I lucked out with it. <laughs> yeah, Taylor last week, we had Dave on, and I did Taylor, rattled Taylor out. legit Dave and I were in the middle of something, and we were going back and forth. <laughs> Jaw sets were happening, and then I had to go to this and the whole I, reading thing. I dude. see him; he's up in the he's up in the screen, and I see beads of sweat coming down. Well, it was a hot day, and I'm thinking like it was a hot day. Be there for it more him. than it was. You're doing great. My man literally quits; like he's just losing some board game Will. at ten <laughs> years old. Like Will finish this shit. I, I, I was this. nervous. Did I get nervous? Easy. <laughs> Dave will put you in the blender. Yeah, there's performance yeah. and nah, there's don't performance say that. and <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, he was out there, dude. Dave does like to chirp. Yeah, he's he's about that. We were, before we got on, I was telling. I've known Dave forever. He's uh. We, do you know the KF? You ever hear his rap? His rap song? No. no. Yeah, he got it was. It was like probably like 
three, four years before you guys got into it. Him, he, him and KFC did like a rap diss back and forth. And I produced <laughs> it out for him. And like, Oh, for real? Yeah. Um, but I've known Dave forever. And it's, we talked about it, I think, on a few of our, one of our episodes, our past episodes, just like as much as the barstool growth and their expansion as a company has been so impressive. Right. I mean, I give Davis flowers all the time when I see him in person. I know people, ch- he's, a, he's a big chirp guy. Yeah. But uh, his personal like brand, just Dave Portnoy, has been super impressive to watch. Really. Dude, it really has, him, man. Like, dude, I, I know him for a fucking long. Like I've seen, I've seen the trajectory and just seeing like what he's done and the, mo- I, the moves he's making. It just makes a lot of sense, but it's, it's impressive. As much as Barstool itself is super impressive. Right, but his own individual just, like, brand. You know, yeah, he's kind of his own thing too he's 100 yeah. percent his own thing yeah, dude. it's crazy yeah. it's impressive well watching his 2020 we, we touched on it a little bit last week his the way he took down a pandemic yeah the content he was able to put out yeah. over and over again the unboxing the frozen pizzas it never ends dude, it's like a- i've eaten jack's pizza before but literally every time i think of jack's pizza now i think i'll oh, fuck those guys because of dave portnoy yeah really? he said fuck these guys yeah, he was so sick, adamant man. about it dude yeah he, the, did, he did such a great job. The I've looked at it with like the amount of people he's helped too. Last year, the whole yeah. like yes, small bro. business thing and the amount of athletes and people he got to give back to people who and yeah. still to this day desperately, desperately needed it. I thought that was I mean, that's special at the same time as he can be and people have, you know, to say what they have to say about him. Fuck all that. That guy's a legend. Yeah, He, he really is. is. And the way people he just get mad words. though. You know how it is. Like Everybody's a, mad these days. Dude, people want to get mad about something. We were in a group chat with him. He well, he left yeah. Nashville. We we're in a group chat with him, and he's like, "Tell them soft Preds fans go fuck themselves." <laughs> so I'm like, "Here come the clicks, dude!" I pull up my Twitter. I'm like, "Hey, <laughs> Porno, I'm let you guys know these soft ass Preds fans need to go fuck yourselves." These dudes started coming down my throat. No pause about like how I'm a soft ass and fuck you and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah. "Yo, I didn't do nothing, dude. I was just I was just the messenger." Yeah. But like, people just want to get mad about whatever they whatever comes up. They want to hate on you. They want to everything music. Our podcast, when I'm playing, yeah. dude, that's one thing I envy about you being able to get out of it is when you're in the middle of the season, like I'll go in, I'll have a couple penalties and it's an absolute fucking bloodbath. Mm-hmm. I just get, I get verbally destroyed on Twitter and you know, you don't want to look, but a lot of times you do look yeah. and it, it eats at you. It uh, definitely, it's one of those things. Does it bother you not like even, even oh, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. The success you've had. Or- it, uh, like I'm always reaching for more. Like that's, yeah. that's my personality is like, I always like, yeah. you know, how can I stay relevant as a football player? How can I keep, what's the next thing I can do mm-hmm. to make myself that much younger? I'm turning 30 this year. And it's mm-hmm. like, I tore my ACL. I had a PED yeah. the year before. It's like, yo, how can I stop the bleeding on this? Like these last two years. And yeah, dude, when you read that stuff, it, it does suck. Yeah. It, it's, it's a, it's a hard thing to look at. Cause you're like, well, especially when you're trying your best, like legit, I'm giving it yeah, my all. Of course. And people are like, yo, fuck this dude. You're like, man, yeah, it's just hard. You I, know, I talk about sports fans a lot. It's an interesting dynamic it really is. Uh, just the, between fans and players, like having yeah, that access. It's just like, it's just an interesting perspective that sports fans have that I, I feel like is kind of not outdated, but it's just like, it's like, there's a disconnect. It's like, you don't have any ownership of these players just because the team you live in this region and your team's paying them a lot of money yeah. because they're the best in the fucking world at this right you have no say in how they fucking lead their lives you know what i mean or like yeah there's literally people like shut up and do this or you know what i mean like they'll shut up and dribble as a stuff fan, like, yeah as a fan how the hell in your mind do you think you have that say like it's just an interesting dynamic like i i don't i don't shit on sports fans but i'm just like they, i feel like they're out of touch i feel like they're they're like a little bit disconnected of like reality in the sense of what's really happening well know? stuff must be going on at home with them you know what i mean it's not like, be something going like on. you can be a real yeah, sports fan and just know that shit's going you know well, it just by, is what they it is vicariously through you dude they yeah. see us on the field they see you making music right and there's two ways they can go i want to be that i'm going to strive to be that or jealousy comes out. Well, how come he gets to be successful? How come right. yeah. this guy gets to do this? Right. Well, this guy's not taking advantage of this, uh, advantage of this situation. Right. So and like that's their one connection here. to being like in that dream of awesome. stuff. And like you said, why can't I be in that position? Like I was stoked to have this, to have you on the bus because I came right before you guys. I think we played each other in a preseason game, but I just know from uh, you're probably in Washington, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I know from a, from an undrafted player's mindset, when you watch like what where you were and what you had and everything else, and it get cut get swindled in my mind because I'm obviously at that point in time, my identity is full. I'm going to be an NFL football player. Of course. So when you see somebody like a Johnny Football be at the top, and then not in my mind take advantage of that opportunity you're like how does this guy not have a perspective on what he's doing yeah. um which i know like a lot of guys that's kind of how it works in a, such a competitive natured world we're all just we're constantly competing no matter what like you said you're sitting at home you see people pass you by like we're so embedded to be competitive that when you see somebody in your mind ahead of you it's like how are they not this because i'm like in my mind man if i was a draft pick or if i was a first rounder or if i was this guy like i would be doing xyz but i know ultimately like i'm living in my own head about it yeah. but i was fascinated to have you on to kind of learn about this up and down ride you've been on i would say i lost a, a huge part of my competitive spirit when i got to the nfl i would say when i got handed you know this amount of money this first round pick you're gonna be the court i just Something about when I went to Cleveland, whether it was you know, my first couple OTAs or training camp or that, all of the confidence that I had, you know, and acquired from college going into the NFL, by the time September rolled around and game one rolled around, I had absolutely fucking zero of it left. None. I had no confidence in what I was doing, how to play the position, not putting the time in. And it got to a point where I questioned myself a lot of if I could really even do it. And, you know, I always look back and, and talk about the situation in Cleveland and if it was exactly right and, you know, it is what it is, you know, it happened the way that it did. And a lot of it, you know, I take a lot of ownership on it because a lot of the things could have been um, overcome with hard work and time and yeah. spending more time in Cleveland and adapting that as home rather than how I kind of acted and maneuvered around, which was. You know, I just kind of stayed away from it a little bit. Now my life was all over the place. And, uh, you know, but the comp confidence and the competition that we were talking about, like we had guys undrafted free agents. I think we had maybe six or seven that year that were undrafted free agents on our Browns team that made the roster and ended up going on and having new contracts and doing great. So I got to see these guys and it never once in my mind clicked that, you know, this is what this guy is living and dreaming for to come in and just get in the building to make any amount of money. And you have this opportunity that you're squandering. And for me, it goes back to just, you know, I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself and my ability because of the way, you know, my life was kind of going. And I and I don't think I ever just got that passion and that fire of, a, of something that you would have had trying to get on the team and trying to go through training camp like your life depended on it. Going to that day at your locker where you open it up and make sure you don't have to go to to see the GM to turn your playbook in type of thing. Yeah. You know, I think that <clears throat> sense of me being a first round pick and having guaranteed years and things like that probably was a disservice to me looking back to say it that way, as much as if it was a blessing, I, I needed, I needed a little tougher, stricter situation. Cause I was just all over the map. They could, I mean, people did it all the time. Jerry Jones did that allegedly with Des Bryant. I don't know it. I never, don't know the guy personally, but I'm sure, I've heard that he had like a legit, like a babysitter, like, yeah. Hey, you can, you can't do this in the beginning of his career and kind of helped him on that path. And then, you know, fit is everything. I got drafted Tennessee at 11. I was fucking pissed, not because it was Tennessee, but because two guys are drafted ahead of me. Like I've always like been able to find a way to keep a chip. You know what I'm saying? Greg I've always, Robinson yeah. And Greg and Robinson and Jake Matthews. I love Greg's that. right now, dude, doing whatever in jail. I'm pretty sure he's in prison right now. Really? Yeah. Sad. He got caught with like 158 pounds of, weed in a bmw huh. how do you how do you fit that in a coupe you know what i'm saying yeah, <laughs> that's like, yeah. like, like you package, gotta break that shit like, hey, that package. shit's gotta be like two pounds right there dude like yeah. you need to put yeah. 50 more you get pulled over there? you know you're fucked yeah. bro that's yeah. it you get pulled over and he was like by utap like he's like in el paso at the border like there's cops everywhere interesting you know what i'm saying wow. but i was wondering what happened now yeah you know that happened like two years ago i think it was like last off season but um, the, what I was trying to get at was, you know, Cleveland, they had a lot of success this year. They're really, they've really turned around the culture, and I'm super happy for them. But at the time, and nobody wanted to go to Cleveland. Mm. When we were at the Rookie Symposium, we're like, this fuck, this is blows. That was bad. That was not fun. <laughs> you know, you're eating Reese's peanut butter cups and going, people got to play here? Like, like, it's just down. If you would have ended up at a spot like, I don't know, like, I don't know how the team is, but like Pete Carroll at Seattle, he's mm. a high-energy dude. 
Seems like he really gets gets love with the quarterbacks, like fits in real good. You go to a place like the Patriots that's super structured. It could have been totally different. Well, we had a uh, I mean, I got I got to be my first year offensive coordinator was Kyle Shanahan. So from the football side of that with him, as far as the offense goes, mm -hmm. was a real fucking treat to be around that guy and get to watch him coach, you know, O line, tight end, receivers. As far as the offense goes, what he did was badass. Now, the dysfunction and what we had in the building between, like, head coach and OC and GM and the things that we had go on behind the scenes are just ludicrous right. now looking back at it. Like, GM's texting mid-game to the OC to play a guy on the – like, just, God, just really, really the, the, wild the shit. And you would, you would tell you that stuff? I mean, I had we, our quarterback coach, Dal Loggins, he's, he, was, uh, he was awesome. Arkansas SEC guy. We had a cool relationship, and we talked about a lot of this shit because them being coaches in the league for you know four, five, six years before that, they had never seen anything like this. And there's a clip that came out, and I see it on Twitter every now and then, but it's from 2014, one of our Browns games, and Kyle Shanahan's going to call his play, and the camera on the sidelines looking at him, and the head coach jumps on the mic, Mike Pettin, and he's like, hey, run the ball here. And Kyle Shanahan kind of looks at him like, what the fuck are you talking about, <laughs> yeah. bro? I game plan all week, every fucking day for this defense to go out and get in 7 to 11 in the red zone and run this play that we have called in our quarterback room to go score a fucking touchdown. Yeah. So what does he do? Fucking fakes it and keeps it and throws it in the flat for a touchdown. Just look there looking at each other like it's a standoff. It's a Mexican standoff Dude, on the sideline. That <laughs> is so brutal. And, I, and I've seen the clip, and, and we're sitting, I'm the fucking earpiece in with mouth full of seeds, like clapping along, and I'm watching this go along, like, what in the fuck are we doing? Mm -hmm. And that was how it was for the first, you know, my first season. And, you know, me and Brian Hoyer, Brian Hoyer was a guy who was trying to, you know, this was his shot to get a chance to start, to go make some money, to make a name. And this has ended up that year propelled him to being able to go to Houston and back to New England and go, you know, live a life in the NFL that mm -hmm. year of him finally getting, getting to start. You know, our relationship was a little rocky there. I'm the young punk that, you know, the media talks about every day and all the things that come into it. That's got to be tough on his side to see all I, that. I see it from his side, though. I completely yeah. get it. If this punk kid's in the way of my job, I'm going to outwork him and out, out, out fucking grind him to go make my fucking four million bucks from the Browns and go on and try and make 10 or 12 from Houston. Mm -hmm. That puts my kids through school. No that question. Put, that, that changes my life to where my house is better. My life is better. My way of life is better. So, like. I completely get it from from Hoyer's view. Looking back at it now, at that point in time, they were fucking snarling at each other, walking <laughs> into the quarterback yeah, yeah. room every day. And the next year, you know, offensive coordinator staff leaves. We get a new staff in, but we got Josh McCown, and that guy. I will look back until I'm 90 years old one day and say, "What a fucking dude! Yeah, a real one." He walks in the first day. Yo, man, Josh McCown, nice to meet you. Anything you fucking need, anything you want to learn about football, tie a fucking string to my backpack. You follow me around. I promise I'll fucking teach you some shit. Yeah. Whoa. Just like that. And you're Whoa. like, that's yeah. Sit down awesome. every day, teach protections, do this. And I came from a system in college where we're looking out, and if the linebacker's tucked in, we're literally throwing a bubble to the fastest guy on our team, yeah. and that's how we ran yeah. our offense. <laughs> you got Edmonds, you got Matthews. There is no him. fucking can-can and flipping the play and yeah. all this. Like That's just how, how it was. I'd go, Jake, hook. So the bubble, Jacob, we'd, we'd figure it out. We just ran backyard style of football. But you see the comparison from that first year to the second. And, and you know, I learned a lot. I, I love I love my second year there. I learned a lot about ball. I got to be around some good guys. But just the two contrasts, it, it is all about fit. And I feel like if I had the situation, um, I had my second year, my first, things would have gone a lot different. You think so? I know so. Oh, you know so. I like that. Yeah. I, I Yeah. That building, dude, I mean, the only, like, I had to be tough 2014. Like Joe Thomas, the best thing in there. Yeah. I mean, other than that, like, they're, you guys win one, two games a year. We were seven and four going into our Thursday night game at the break, and then we lost all five coming home. That's tough. Brutal. 
Real talk. Isn't it crazy how much dysfunction that there can be with certain teams like in the NFL? Especially growing up, because you're like in the NFL, you're like, look at the NFL. You think that's you think, it. You think everyone's legit. You think everyone's a stud. You think all the coaches got their shit together. Yeah. Like and then you, you get there and you're like, oh, this is and playing college like, is a little bit better than this. Playing at Michigan, playing at AM, Nebraska, like you go, you're like, man, if this is this is what it's like in college, the operation, the obviously you're younger and you have no clue like what they're going through as coaches and shit. But you're like, oh, if it's like this, like it's only gonna be 10x this in the pros, yeah. like strength and condition like all this stuff and you kind of nah. get training room. <laughs> no, yeah dude. training room all this stuff and then you kind of get there and you're like yeah, you see that downgraded. money goes to, I severely yeah. downgraded from AM to Cleveland yeah you see yeah, oh know. money goes to the players not facilities and how the players are actually keep up with their bodies and stuff like stuff like all that it's it, it's nuts man the NFL is a, is a crazy the game has changed a lot than when we were growing up kids watching the NFL I feel like in the last you know, five or six years, not only are guys playing longer just because of, I feel like the training methods, certain things, but there is a miles Garrett type of motherfucker coming out in the draft every single year. It and seems I like, like every year there's like, be, a, Oh, this guy's the best grade in the last 40 years. This guy's the best grade. in like, these dudes just, just keep more freaks, out. Dude. They're just Chase more young kids. They're playing 14 years. Chase Young comes out this year. There's going to be another one that comes out this yeah, year. Another one at Ohio state, dude, Ohio state just kicks them out right now. Like but legit fucking, bigger, faster, stronger, but it's like, when does it is it ever when gonna fucking stop? Dude, have you seen Miles Garrett? Yeah, cross up that poor little white dude on the court. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. Cross him twice and ducked on Bro, him and stared at him could like he, could he play in the NBA? I don't He got a body he probably about. body some dudes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean give him to him down low. What's that? Put him in there to foul. People foul out. He lay down low, he's maybe he's built different. Guys. All right, pray for me. Blockfolio, podcast ad copy. Got that one, knocked it out of the park. Blockfolio is the world's most popular mobile app for cryptocurrency tracking and trading. Build your portfolio by following the prices of more than 10,000 coins. Get phone notification updates directly from the projects you care about. These eyes, my dude, and these You're eyes. Doing fucking awesome. The only thing they can see better is all the good things you can get at Blockfolio. <laughs> uh, buy and sell Bitcoin, ETH, Ethereum, Ethereum, Doge, Ethereum. Ethereum, Dogecoin, and other top tokens will ab with absolutely zero fees. That's zero fees, dude. You're dishing. It's like Pokemon cards when you're growing up, dude. You're just snapping them things off, no problems. There's no fees there. And get a free coin with every trade over ten dollars. So you just you're making money by trading. Blockfolio. I mean, it's un it's unbelievable. Visit the App Store and download Blockfolio for free to play. Blockfolio, <laughs> investing for crypto. For the crypto generation. Fuck Talk yeah. about your experience with crypto. It scares the shit out of me, to be totally honest. I'll tell you what, though. I'm going to be 100% hey. about you with that crypto <laughs> shit, dude. They trade 24-7. <laughs> it's scary as hell. Let me tell you something. You get on that thing with Block Fully, you start trading at $10 a pop, you're going to make some money. And just put enough in. Just, just do me a favor. Put enough in where you can go, it doesn't matter if I win or lose it. And you might win some more. You might do some more. And guess what? We're all billionaires, baby. Three commas in that bank account. That's all we want. Hey, Make that thing look like a phone number. Now's the time to do it, though. Because it's dipped. It's dipped. fucking tanked, Is it bro. Dipped? Yes, now it's time to throw See? that money in. Yeah, if it dips, dude, stocks always go up, dude. That's the borrow store. Are you in crypto? The roof. A little. A little bit. You dabble. Yeah, you dabble on block folio. You would be mad if it was gone. Exactly. Did this it? Honestly, I, I, I can't. There's something about it. It's something about my, you know, when I'm on social media and I see... I see so many uh, kids and young kids and dudes I know in LA that aren't like, you know, in the influencer world. I lived in LA for almost seven years. So like just, I started seeing it happening. Like, you know, there's obviously been a big boom, but I just, something about it feels slightly faulty to me. I'm just going with my gut. Like I can't, I can't really like get behind it completely. And my, you know, my money guys are just like, hey, you can, Put in a little bit, you know, but yeah, they wouldn't advise. You know, I asked them like what they would advise. They'd say, I that said like one to five percent. Yeah, that's what yeah. like I want to say that the big money firms have came out and said like, hey, one percent yeah. needs to be a part of your portfolio. Just, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just, we're fucking up the block folio ad, but no, we fly hey, block folio, block fucks, folio dude. rips, dude. Yeah. Use block folio. Did I need I, block I, folio. I need I, it. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need I'm it. in that shit. Like it's been a block folio. Is that, <laughs> is that ad done, Alex? I get it though. I, I get it. You know what I mean? I, I definitely love the idea, like a decentralized thing, you know. But I'm just super curious what like the Fed's gonna do with it. What's That's the thing that scares the shit out of me. Me too. I'm just like two things scare me. One. If this thing starts getting too strong, America, China, the, these world dominators aren't going to be like, 
you're not going to make our dollar zero. Well, China's so, already said you can't trade. Boom. Okay. There it is. I mean, that's, what, like, that's what tanked it this recently. And then the other side of it is I'm terrified of getting left behind. Yeah. I make right? all this money. Yeah. Exactly. I'm doing real good. Ask and then all of a sudden, there, I start looking at this paper. It don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because now everyone's doing crypto. 100%. Everyone's doing that. It's kind of scary. It's interesting time to be alive. Hey, hey, hey for sure it is, bro. <laughs> it is very wild out here, dude. Yeah. Yeah, so back to the pod. Where were we at? I think we were just talking I don't about know, I think we found a Johnny enough dude. You fuck it seems like you're doing really well. No man, things things are uh things are great. I have <laughs> I have uh, I have no complaints, you know. Just uh fuck man. Go play golf in the morning, have a couple cocktails, hang with the boys, maybe lay by the pool. Yeah, trade did. on Blockfolio. Yeah, hell yeah, there we go. <laughs> trade on Blockfolio. I think what I, yeah, dude, fuck we've, with had the most. Co- we've had a, enough cocktails in the last seven days in Nashville. This place fucks. Nashville fucks. Yeah, what a town. It really, yeah, does. we can definitely talk about Nashville because this place has been special. There's, there's, there's actually, yeah. yeah, how's your guys' experience been I'm here? Traveling a lot. I'm, I'm probably gonna move here. Uh, we've been talking a little bit. Yeah, like, you well, well, you texted me back in February saying I'm moving in March first. Yeah, yeah, you've been you June. jump all over yeah, the map, bro. June one. I'm like pretty. I'm about as close to a nomad as you can be right now. Like yeah. I, I uh, you know, one, I started, I started doing it when, when COVID happened in LA, I was just like, I get the fuck out of here. You know, it was very, very strict there. It was just like, kind of had wanted to leave for a while. Not your typical LA type of guy, really. In yeah. General. So it sounds like everyone's wanted to leave too. I was there a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, it's just a certain vibe there that. Yeah, doesn't get my dick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't get the rocks off. Get it's going. definitely yeah. Yeah. Get you going. Yeah. So, so um, it looked, it felt like an opportunity to just and I and I kind of you know I've been a touring man for a long time. We we tour a lot, like in the last probably you know six seven years. So I love being around different places, and I, I make music and podcasts. And so I do it all in my house, really. So and it's fair. It's fairly easy nowadays. Like I had your buddies over. They they came and uh, helped us produce one of our episodes last week and showed them our, our setup like my my music setup it's in my fucking bedroom just and running gun it's super simple like it really is and it's and, and you can make studio quality uh, album quality stuff so i just kind of noticed as i was traveling and started doing this like i get new energy everywhere i go you know there i get a i get a new feeling um you know the new things new people i'm seeing that i definitely am able to channel creatively and i i, I feel that you know especially after being there seven years and making it more or less, you know, making music in the same r- three rooms. Like yeah. these two studios, I'd work in my house. So, you know, it was just, it was something I want to lean into for as long as I can. Um, and Nashville definitely is on top of the totem pole as far as like where I would settle again. But I'm not in a huge rush to settle. Why would you? Really it not. seems like I'm like watching, following you guys. It seems like you guys got a great gig going. Fun, I mean, you guys, man. you don't have kids. You, you can go figure your stuff out. Well, yeah. how, where have you been? You've been to Montana, Scottsdale yeah, and here? That seemed like the dopest spot is Montana. Yeah. Montana, you've seen like all the animals deal. every Ice day. Spot. That shit so looked for awesome. Real. Had a hundred acres out the there. The cold I therapy. Didn't see anyone. I literally didn't see anyone the entire time. And it was awesome. It was what I wanted, you know? Yeah. Is the lack of energy tough though? I feel like I feel like I missed that a little bit. Like well, the yeah, hustle you know, and bustle. I'm going, I'm going places more or less for like two to three months. Yeah. So, so there we actually extended. I, I actually only got that for like, I want to say I started with six weeks and I extended it to like nine weeks there because I, we loved it. Mm. But at the end, we're like, time to go. go. See some, let's go see some bitches. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just like, Get them out there. It was really nice. It was really, really nice. And, and, and I'm a big, I'm a big nature guy. I've gotten a lot further down into spirituality and just, I like, I like peace and quiet. I really do. So I know it doesn't look like it all the time, but um, yeah, just like the yin and the yang of it both. Like I like, you know, we went to Scottsdale, which was fucking rah rah. We were going nuts, you know, it's yeah. a super fun place. Montana, you know, and then I kind of that's kind of what we're doing in flip flop. And I'm also having toured in a few years, so obviously as soon as this this is all kind of calming down with COVID, you're seeing the events open up and big crowds gathering. So. I don't know if I'll settle until after this this next you like tour year. Going I'm going to tour a lot this year. So, mm-hmm. what's the rhythm with Ball Don't Lie? I mean, it's every it's every other week. Yeah, we're doing bi-weekly, but uh, it's pretty much we you know, do as many of as, as we can whenever we're around. You know, we haven't really talked about doing any guests or anything because you know we're we're I th- I would say we're maybe moving a little bit different than most people that are doing the podcast stuff. At least for me, like talking a lot more about life and just like our experiences yeah. as we're going through it what's helped us try and be better people and and what makes 
you know, maybe our life a little easier or, or just trying to improve and, and what we're learning as we, as we go on. We probably talk a little bit more deeper and, you know, the most about a podcast. But for me, I'm not trying to, you know, I never started Ball and Wide to try and have a number one podcast in the world. I never wanted to, this to be my next thing that I'm doing to be a full time job or anything. Um, something I want to have fun and share a little bit of my message and something that, you know, we're going for, you know, we've got to travel around, do some of this in Scottsdale yeah. here. I'm going for self-sustainable bro shit where you can just yeah. go around with my dogs Fucking and keep it and around, dude. Do a couple self of and and underrated. That's an underrated thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's, 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 bro shit, dude. that's not seriously. I, I, I know a lot, like I know tons of athletes. I just wanted people to like hanging out. He's just been my favorite guy to have. He's just a fucking good old boy. I like good old boys. Like, I, you know, being talented or being successful. Trust me, I like I like to compete. You know, I like what you're saying about competition. That's actually been something that I I adamantly like. I adamantly work on getting rid of that chip. Like, I looking at life, and that's bottom line is like kind of. A lot of my podcasts, like you DM and we talk about it, like a lot of it's on like self growth because I just perspective change. I was very, very much in an athlete bubble my whole life growing up and and just what that does to you, what it takes to be great, you know, like to be a great athlete, it takes that, it takes that ego of like, man, fuck you. It's like competition. Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm better. Like I'm going to work harder. Why not? Yeah. Why not me? You know, like, and it's been interesting. It's been really interesting for me personally, but I know he's like he's been on this wave and I kind of wanted to just see people have had people hear him talk about how we talk when we're on a balcony in my house, like or traveling around. We have these talks and I was just like, let's just do a podcast. Fuck it. You know, I want, well. I want people to know. I want people. Well, he came on mine and it did really well. And people like, dude, thanks for showing Johnny like that. I didn't even know Johnny was like, I thought he was a fucking douche, you know, like. Which is just yeah, because usually just people not. control the narrative that when you don't just, have your own yeah, right, and like I would never, I would, he, he's just not, you know. So I was like, yo, why don't we do it and just let's we'll talk how we talk, you know? And and that's really what it leans. It leans a lot more. It leans a lot more like kind of guys got like work. Honestly, it's like trying to trying to go more down the spiritual like path of enjoying life and you know like the regrets. This is a guy who, you know. I know what I do to myself if I fuck up. And I have one millionth of the people paying attention and watching what he had, you know? So I'm actually inspired by people like that who can like pick themselves up when it's tough, man. Like when you when you fall from graces, it's really it's really a challenge to pick yourself up and be able to enjoy life. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. it really is. And a lot of people are faking it. You know what I mean? And I started to see a shift in him personally where I was like, you're you're happy you know what i mean like you're doing like every day to day he was you know at my house in scottsdale day to day more happier than i was and you know and i'm and i had no fuck i didn't have these like you know i didn't have i never really dealt with depression or some of the things he dealt with or at the scale he was dealing it and i was i i was neighbors with him then and i saw how he was then so i started to see the energy shift where it was just like man he had he's at peace with it and it's it's been inspiring to me to be for me to be around because I know I didn't have those there were very drastic you know drastic fall from graces where everyone personally like everyone in here you know it's hard sometimes it's hard to get out of bed and no one's watching no one's watching no one gives a shit and no, it's hard internally no real shit and like no one's watching so to have a lot of people watch and to kind of have that and and break that break that down um Break those walls down where he can be happy genuinely and like have a comforting energy to be around, be a nice person. It's inspiring to me. I like that. That's and it's relatable because yeah. everyone says their list is like, oh, damn, like everyone goes through it. Yeah, for sure. everyone's I mean, got we, their own we're, shit. We're all, I mean, as much as we get hyped up and whether it's music or sports or whatever it is, you're put on a pedestal when it's really not. I mean, everybody has the same problems at home, this, that, that anybody across the world has. But the media in sports, traditional media at least, and what we deal with in the locker room or anything like that, doesn't pay a lot of attention to it, a lot of time a, a time in it. I think the mainstream media almost dehumanizes people more and puts you on just strictly athlete and what it is. Yeah. The cool thing about the way media shifting's now is this is media. This is your own platform. Your, this is your own platform to talk the way you want to talk, get your message out. Because I guarantee you, after a game or this or that, you get back in the car and drive home, at least for me, back in the day, I'd always think about different things I would want to say or this or that or getting done with a sporting event where you lose. 
your immediate reaction going into the fucking podium in the locker room with your fucking suit on, sweating like a fucking pig <laughs> in front of the lights. Like, yeah, bro, I threw three fucking picks and we lost 30 to nothing. Like, hey, yeah, my tough day. Dick, bro. <laughs> How do you think my fucking day went? <laughs> so, like, the, the whole the whole thing is kind of, like, shifting and, and just changing to uh, where you can tell your story the way you want to. And I think hearing you say earlier about, like, getting on Twitter and seeing certain things, I've used the app button on Twitter to see what people say to me. Right. I've like used the search it, button? just people in my mentions, whether it's random fans or all this. Yeah. Right. I have used that to over the last year, find what still makes me pissed off. Uh -huh. So for example, Find something that I, I used to be a reactor on Twitter. You say something to me, I'm waiting for the opportunity. To you got ammo. You, you got fun. ammo on everybody. Oh, I'm ready to go. Yeah. It's my favorite thing. Now I use it as, oh, that hit me and made me feel some type of way. Why does that make me feel that some yeah. type of way anymore? Why do I feel like that in my head or in, in my heart that makes me want to get mad at this person, want to say something back or react negatively or something that I'm going to regret? And I think I've used a lot of that and the negativity and the hate that I've had towards me to work on things that I didn't necessarily like about myself or I needed to fix or didn't even know bothered me. For the process that people are listening to this going, fuck, I deal with that all the time. What, so when you see something that makes you upset, what's the process you go through to get rid of those, that feeling inside? I've, I've, I used to be a, a fast, the same fast twitch way I was on the football field. I was in every aspect of my head throughout my life. I see something, I react right away. Yeah. My biggest thing is just to take back and look at it and just kind of, whether I type it out immediately and something that I'm not going to send, I, I review it. I look back at it. I make sure that that's how I want to interact with people. And I, I'm the biggest believer these days in positivity and good fucking vibes. Mm. I have no reason to be mad at anybody anymore. I've let a lot of the hate out of my heart go from the past of whoever I felt had wronged me or this oh, or yeah. that, yeah. or the guy on ESPN who's telling me I'm a fucking bum, right? Yeah. But you, Johnny, you, that's the biggest thing is you you hated yourself for a lot of the oh, decisions for, for, you made. For, for, for a long time. I mean, nobody, you don't, at least for me, I beat myself up more than anybody in the media or anybody sure. outside the world yeah. ever could have. Ev every day. Everyone to does To the that. point of where I was questioning my life, if it was worth it, it was this. And it got to a point of where I never thought I'd have a good sunny day again. Yeah. I didn't know if I'd have a day where I was ever happy again. So I look at it now and looking on my phone and we're talking about that is I have so much sense of gratitude for even being where I'm at and then being able to even continue on through life that uh, I'm able to slow down and kind of sit back and just relax and look at things in the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I try not, I try my best. I still fail daily and weekly to handle every situation correctly because I got my, I got my things. I got my morals. I got my values. You're not the a second monk. you cross them. Yeah. My dad yeah. said, slap that motherfucker in the mouth when I was a kid. And yeah. that's just the way I was raised. If he crosses your line, does this X, Y, and Z. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, that's, just, that that's, just, that's just that's just how I was, and now I'm 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 getting better at it. It's a work in progress, but I'm more socially aware, and I treat people the way that I want to be treated for the most part. And mm -hmm. if I don't, if I can try to apologize and make sure it doesn't happen again moving forward, it could all be so simple if you allow your mind to believe it. That's Fo very cool. Football is like a football. Is, El's well said, by the way. Yeah, you like sure. that. It, but dude, fo football is. I mean, to be to be great at. And what y'all do it just takes so much aggression and you know what i mean it, you're really wired you. you guys are wired different bro you're yeah in the, you're I, in the fucking trenches like, i try to i've I, seen I, you I game too we played you guys right? yeah you your know, first guys, win ever was against the titans congratulations it was. thank you very much yeah I, I that was awesome that. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need that in the worst way man. That's I that, was, that was outstanding <laughs> <laughs> we, it was a tough flight home i'll tell you that it was a tough flight home for the boys <laughs> I figured uh, everybody would want to get the hell out of Cleveland. Yeah, I was, at that point, I was like, "Give me the fuck out of here, yeah. dude." That was tough. But you're dude, a savage. You know what I mean? Like you're a big. Oh, I you're, appreciate that. You're, and and but it, you're wired in a certain way where that's why you are. That's why you're so fucking great. You're obviously God's gifted and and talent and size that's rare. Yeah. 4,300 4, gods, dude. Hopefully, one of them got my back, dude. That's pretty solid. Yeah. But I just don't. That shit's tough, dude. Like having the mindset you talk about all the time of being like competitive and yeah, like we were, we were bred the same way. If you play football at a young age, it's kind of like yeah. you fucking scratch and claw and you keep going until that guy quits before you. And if you quit, you're a bitch, you got to do something different. And it's like the whole ego thing is so difficult for me to wrap my mind around. And I 
tussle with it all the time because it's like I read books like Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. It's a great book. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to read that, that's a solid book to like kind of catch yourself up on like what's really should be ego because ego is not a bad thing if you use it in the right way. I love how you're reading that. Agreed. Yeah, no, it's it's well, self improvement is the most important thing, and I wish I knew that when I was 21, 22. You know what I'm saying? Things that bugged me wouldn't bug me as like they don't bug me as much anymore. I still get upset about stuff when people say things, but like at the end of the day, no one knows. And it's so weird how like the Twitter thing is because if someone tweets at me and goes, "You're a dog shit husband," "You're a dog shit dad," it's like to me, I'm like, say whatever you want Mm -hmm. because they don't know me. But the minute someone would say, "You're a bad football player," I'm like, fuck. Cause they get to watch me every Sunday. I'm like, how do they know that I don't, you know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I've like tussled with this ego thing for so long. And yeah, like pregame, like during the game, like that's who I am. A, a, a primitive fight or flight. Like I'm a fighter. Right. Like that's that, that gives, allows me to display that. But you know, when are things, when do you stop looking at things as ego? I got to be better than everybody. Then start looking at things objectively. Yeah. Like how do I accomplish this goal without having to, frustrate or upset everybody else around me right. to get the thing done. And that's what I've like this last six months, we talk about it a, a few times, yeah, was, but um, this ACL dude, this it's fucking brutal. I don't even want to go outside. Yeah. I don't want to go outside. I don't want to do stuff. I wake up, I get up in the morning. I'm like, I got to go tussle with this again. The first time I really went and did anything social in the last six months was at that Preds game. Wow. And even when I'm at the Preds game, chugging the beer. Good showing, though. Thank you very much. I'm a, Great I'm, showing. I'm a, I'm a cop. Great warmed my heart when I was done. Yeah. yeah. I didn't, I'm when per- I saw it, I was like, okay, yeah, we, yeah. Need, we needed He's this. Yeah, He's bad. Hey, I felt bad. Yeah, yeah. I did feel like yeah. I was kind of coming back <laughs> yeah. to life. He's so bad. I did. But even when I was drinking the beer, dude, my only thought was, don't drink this beer, because if you do, that's inflammation. Then your knees, this, that. So I just poured that thing all over me. Didn't consume one of it. Wow. One ounce. That's crazy. That was your thought in the moment. It's just, it's wild how it consumes you. And watch your process of what you go through just because our successes have looked different in the nfl doesn't mean i don't battle the same thing as you do no. every single nfl player deals with that whether they want to admit it or not no. so when i'm going through it and i see that i know that it's possible for me to now change my mindset when i get out of there because the way i live it's so obsessive and it's so like focused on football everything is like how can i maximize this mm-hmm. and then when i'm done like i had to make a big 180 otherwise it's not sustainable it's great it's great that you're thinking yeah. like that though yeah like, that's the first step is, is, is getting is getting your mind to allow allow it to think that way and yeah and maybe a lot of it's just the youth and and like maybe the football growing up but maybe it's just just being young and getting to a point of where maybe you're everybody reaches the point of maybe where they're able to start having their mind go to that point where they can begin to understand it a little bit because mm-hmm. i i people ask me all the time i'm like i don't know if there's one single thing that happened that made me look at it any differently it's just life kind of started working in a way where my mind started thinking of this and i just grabbed onto it and fucking held on for dear life and now i've got people around me and i surround myself for the first time with people who are like-minded and get it and you know we all going in a collective type of way with a goal of just trying to be better dudes it's 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 really i think there's a shift happening now and i mean dude i, I didn't grow up like i didn't think about any of this shit i just try to try to fuck as many girls as i could yeah still and be the best in our sport yes. <laughs> hasn't hasn't changed much there in that point <laughs> yeah. well, go to the bar and yeah. rip some fireball yeah. Yeah. Rumple you mints, just but you know what i mean like just the idea of um like i just know like it actually gets it actually gets me out of bed it gets that gets my rocks off to like think that i'm I'm seeing things on a bigger scale and, and it's not I realized like bro I think most of us walking the streets like athlete or not you're you're so immersed in your own bubble like I think you can zoom out a little bit you know what I mean and that's what it feels like zooming out just like okay like this isn't who I am like I, I'm not I'm not I'm not my last mistake I'm not my last thought you know what I mean like that there's a bigger that's that's what it feels like to me and that's where I feel like Johnny's gone down that path. And I think most people like my stuff and listen to some of my stuff that I'm talking about. I'm not coming from a preaching perspective. I'm just saying, dude, I was the opposite. I was such a, you know, I wasn't outwardly egotistical, like, oh, I'm the man, you know, but like in my head, it was all about me. Every relationship, how I reacted to my girl. You know what I mean? Even the way I was thinking about things, I just know, I just realized at one point, I was like, dude, everything i really think everything revolves around me all the time mm-hmm. and it's right. just not it's not the case you know if i would have wrote down my like character traits of how i treated people and what i was doing 
in my time in the league, 2014, 2015, it would have been just a horrendous list of not even doing it by accident, but like Mike's saying, just thing, thinking things revolve around me and things are supposed to go this way. How the way I was living my life was just so shallow and closed minded and narrow minded to the point now of like, it, like I said earlier, it can all, it can be simple. It doesn't have to be this cluttered, crazy rat race to get to the end goal of what just and live your life. And, and we talk about this all the time is I'm chasing happiness. And that's one thing that I'm chasing in my life. I got more than I need. Still hungry to go and try and get more. But at the same time, I'm chasing putting more smiles on my face every year than I did last year. Yeah. It's, it's a simple goal. How do you think you chase happiness, though? Man, I'm, I'm starting to be honest with myself probably in what I like to do. You know, for a long time in my life, like I said earlier, I didn't like doing much of anything. Going and picking a football up didn't make me happy. Going and riding a dirt bike or doing this or Love going to the bikes. lake or doing any of that. Golf didn't – all none of this stuff really, really made me happy anymore. So now – me and him play fucking beer pong all the time. I haven't Love won it. a game since I've been in Nashville. He's won a nine oh, since he's got here. But, guys. Like that. Nine. but <laughs> that's it gives me my competitive edge. It's something that I nine. love to do. I love little bar games. I play darts. I'm up 250 bucks a day. <laughs> I'm making money and playing bar games. And it's just like, I'm starting to see different things in my life that are really coming back. I, I'm almost reverting back to my childhood, I guess I would mm -hmm. say. I'm finding more things that I didn't know that I liked that I did growing up. I'm slowly starting to like get back to like second we get into Nashville, we're in the country, driving, going, playing golf, doing things, just being away from people. I'm like, fuck, man, I love this again. I want to start doing this. And, you know, luckily at where I'm at in my life, you know, I'm not married, no girl, solo fucking ranger out here trying to take on the world. So, yeah. you know, I have the luxury to be able to kind of just do what I want to do and find what makes me happy. Now, if you'd have asked me this a year ago, I'd have told you I don't fucking know. Yeah, it seems like it's like enjoying like just the small things that like bring you joy. Okay. Because when you when you when you say that, I'm like, and I get this from uh, like the book we were on uh, self awareness. Because a lot of this shit we're talking about is like self awareness perspective. 100%, yeah, 100%. and it's like it the way they talk about it in the book is like happiness is uncaused. Like, how can you acquire something that you you innately already have? And ultimately, at the end of the day, it's more so realizing that you got to drop a bunch of illusion, illusions that we labor ourselves with, yeah. like football player. Okay, All this stuff that we think revolves so much around us, mm -hmm. it's more like dropping those illusions. But it, ultimately, it seems like we're like no, saying the same no, stuff. Because no, I'm it, like, it, it absolutely I've heard is. you say that too, and I'm like, how do you chase happiness? So, how but you, you but uh, you explained it. You explained it. To, I was like, okay, yeah, it just I mean, seems you, like you spend more time with yourself by yourself throughout a day than you do anybody else. Your wife, whoever it may be, you spend probably more time in your own head with yourself, 24 hours a day, seven days a fucking week. If you can't fucking be honest with yourself, how are you going to be honest with other people around it? And I think that's where self-awareness with me has come from is, man, I felt like I used to be a guy that would lie and I lied to myself about, you know, what I saw through my eyes or what was going on or whatever. But when I started to truly be honest with myself, it's where the acceptance of not really loving football and this came and not wanting to do that. It all came from just being like, you feel this way, be honest with yourself about it, embrace it and let it be what it is. And from that, I felt like I continued to achieve more self-awareness through that. It gotcha. starts with self-honesty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh, not the conversation you thought Johnny Manziel was going to come on and have, but here we are. <laughs> is a fucking, am I up? Hey, to, wait, to you, guys, you guys are up. You guys are the, we, so, the guests now do the third one. Yeah? Yes. Good luck. Knock it out, Steve. <laughs> where, am I, where am I starting? At the top? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So Bose Quiet Comfort Earbuds are the world's most effective noise-canceling earbuds. Um, I'm I don't know if you, I don't know if you've had a pair of buds, but they are uh, they're, they're they're quite fantastic. Yeah, I would liken them to a Chuck Bud in the same ballpark. Just maybe not, <laughs> whatever. Uh, Bose Quiet Comfort Earbuds deliver world class noise canceling, elevating your focus. They provide crisp, clear sound wherever you are. You want to take us home? Yeah, they are super comfortable and touch controls are easy to use. They are great for any phone calls you need to make. If you want to get yourself a pair of Bose, go to Bose.com slash Barstool to rule the quiet. With your own Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds, rule the quiet. Hey, they—they they are. Uh, you can be working on those. They're things getting shorter. 
You know he got it. Well, they're getting shorter. That's kind of bullshit. Cause the ones you guys gave me was goddamn novel. Yeah, he's like, he's like, I was what reading the fuck? Tale of Two Cities in front of Portnoy. <laughs> they're, 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 they're reading the pop up. Bro. Yeah, they, 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 that thing had pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just had the some fucking guy putting headphones in. Uh, hey, but they, bullshit, hey, they stick though. Dude. You'll be working out thinking they're gonna fall out sweating. They stick. They're phenomenal. But Joe Rogan. Not, how, not to cut you off. Yeah, no, go ahead. I'm just trying to make sure. I'm trying. They're amazing. I'm making sure. You know, you got to get the. You got to get the full amount of time. Man, we do you got a massage that oh, shit, Yeah, they the crushed it. Limit. Did you do the bow thing? Did we do the whole bow thing? Yeah, we they did the entire thing, man. Oh, then what are you mad about? <laughs> I'm just making sure you massage yeah, no, the right. entire advertisement. You guys Listen, know being in all this thing. If you it. don't wear Bose headphones, you fuck yourself, dude. <laughs> and I, I know I know we're talking about ego and all that, but literally, if you want your life to get better. Fucking pop on an audiobook and don't let and cancel shit out. Pop on this pod. Post. Dude, pop on the pod. Put fucking listen to whatever. You want to hear this pod? You want to get some enlightening? Put the fucking <laughs> bows on. Stop right now. Pause the whole entire thing. Go buy some bows. Come back. Go to bows.com slash barstool and get whatever you want, dude. Oh, I like uh, I like this question on the screen. I want I want Which your one are we on at? What? Uh will Julio Jones be a Titan? Yeah, I think so. Do you think so? I, dude, I'm all fucking He's in. like, okay, shit. My I... chips, I'm just, I'm in, dude. Those are me pushing the chips, and I almost broke our shots, which dude, you can get at the merch store at uh, Barstool, uh, the whatever, dot com. If Julio goes to the Titans, like... Cancel Christmas, dude. On paper, man, how is that not one of the better offenses? Hey, you've... chill. Vrabel's going to watch this. And I'm just, Vrabel's, I'm not on, hey, I'm not on the Titans. You Vrabel's all about that verbal assault. That's all right, I'm not on the Titans. Uh, you I talk. am a, uh, I, I'm a big fan of Tannehill. You like Tannehill. Happy. He's an Aggie. We love him. You, you give him Julio with the weapons you guys already have. I, I think you, uh, how can you not have high hopes? I mean, you got Derrick Henry at two. That's his yard rusher. Uh, an yeah. O-line like they have. A.J. Brown, Julio Jones on the other side. Tannehill delivering the rock. Anthony Ferkser. Oh, yeah. Don't sleep on Ferk guy. The Big Ferkser guy. Big Ferkser yeah. guy. Yeah. Probably runs a five flat 40, but he has like a one four ten split, dude. Yeah. Yeah. This kid's but, wild. Drew, uh, what's your take on this? I don't think it's it's... Cam Newton is it's the best college football player take. to ever lace them up. That Johnny was Manziel tweeted by tweeted Johnny that Hashtag unpopular opinions. I think, uh, I mean, you're arguably that. Uh, Tim Tebow is arguably that. I, I said it took a... Uh, oh, Tebow I, too. I, I, I was going to say... I, I, I it took a, oh. a national championship to be considered the GOAT of college football. I would I would think that would, would have to be fair. That's a fair That's a fair statement. Re Reggie Bush definitely gets a bad shake because... He, Took a little money in college yeah. and then took cares? his Heisman away. Like, oh Jesus! They he should, he they did should, whatever. They give Reggie his Heisman yeah. back. He did what every college bullshit. football player wants. They all want to get like, oh hey, are we? You know, am I going to be recruited high enough to give me a little vehicle well, I mean, or a little expect, job? Bro, I mean, this is this is the, the whole thing that hopefully in the next couple of years changes in college football is, man, these guys come from nowhere to get a chance to go play football, and guys mm -hmm. are coming up to you, you know offering you money or this and that this is more money than you've ever seen in your life your family has in their bank account you tell me you're gonna punish this kid because of that because you know maybe his family got a malibu beach house while he was playing at usc or whatever but, <laughs> hey that didn't make hey, some players some players are better than others if you fucking ran the rock like reggie bush you should have fucking two malibu beach no houses. Question, yeah. I, I don't think that's a bad thing at all i was praying to the gods i would get some money in college i was did i go check that mailbox God damn, another bill. I was hoping for, I wanted something. Not even in Michigan? Bro, I caught myself a couple of like free meals every once in a while. I go pay a tab and they'd be like, no, don't worry yeah, the, about the it. The O-line in, in, in any college locker room or NFL locker room, it's funny. For the most of the O-line that I feel like I've been around, they're always about the free meal, the free. Get that know, free shoe. That's all they, I got. They love it. They love if it. I ever got something, it was like a free meal, like some waffle fries and a chicken sandwich. <laughs> I'd be like, hell yeah, let me get that tab, I guess. And they're like, no, nah, don't worry about it. And I'm like walking to class like I'm a fucking gangster, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm out here breaking NCAA violations. No problem for some waffle fries. But you hear about like Matthew Stafford getting five hundred thousand dollars in his mailbox, and Johnny, he says no. You? Everybody wanted to walk in and have that nice little envelope sitting there. I don't know. I, everybody I, I, wanted I to even ask you this. I, 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 yeah, I, did I, you? I might, uh, I might have talked about this a couple times before. And, um, yeah, dude, I got lucky. I went to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we went to. We would go to like the Wild World of Sports for the college football awards at the end of the year, and then like. Uh, if you won an award there, we went to Miami and it was for the national championship game. And I'll never forget getting off the plane and, and walking to baggage claim. And this guy, 
comes up behind me. I didn't have my fucking Bose noise canceling. Fucking <laughs> oh, hell yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, hell yeah. This guy's got a future in this. Yeah. But, uh, he, this guy comes up to behind me. He's like, yo, how would you want to make three grand? I'll turn around. I'm like, fuck yeah, bro. I got yeah. like 65 bucks in my bank account. I'm waiting on that, uh, you know, beginning of the month, January stipend check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's golly. For $460 or whatever it was. I'm like, hell yeah, I want to make, I want to make three grand. So I take this guy's number down. Had one of my boys at the time who was, you know, I guess I created a little bit of an entourage at this point. My boys, like everybody wants, everybody me. wants that. That's when the show was hot. Oh, too. I was watching it every day yeah. at this point. I had to have the boys around. You were me. Vinny Chase, and I had this. I had one of my boys take this guy's number. We're doing it all sneaky. We don't want to get caught. We're trying to learn from everybody else that's got caught. Yeah, and uh, you know, may or may not have gone back to uh, this guy's condo and signed probably ten thousand pieces. Oh, really? Flats, everything. Oh, so he, he, he got it out of it. He gave me three grand. The fucking horse. 10,000 items, fucking shit, three grand. He got it. Three point, grand at for this 10, point, I'm on Instagram 000. trying to find out how to get a table at Live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do you guys have $500 minimums at stage tables yeah. for Live on Sunday? Yeah. It's like what I'm going for. Uh, God, so that's funny. I'm signing these autographs, and this other guy who's like bringing the, bringing the pictures over. He's like, yo, you're getting fucking ripped off. Here's this guy's number. Hit him up. He'll give you 30 grand. And I'm like, fuck yeah, man. I'm going to make three grand. and then 30. I'm going to get out of here with 33 grand. And for those of you with a calculator, out, that's $33,000. <laughs> so this guy pretty much is like, all right, go to this room at the Fountain Blue. All the stuff will be in there laid out. And when you're done, just send me a picture of all of it. I'll give you the code of the safe. The money will be in there. Yeah, that's and, some fucking and probably probably for Tijuana the next, that's, hey, that's, right John, that's a Johnny well, football. Probably story, for dude. the next four months, I went to that fucking condo once a month in fucking South Beach, knocked that shit out. I am a professional boxer and unboxer. Uh, every mini helmet, <laughs> flat picture you could see. <laughs> And it's funny when I sign autographs these days with my guy out in New Jersey. He's like, "Do you, you fucking pack it yourself? I'll give you some extra bucks." No shit. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I got to go down. I got to. Uh, I got to make a somewhat of a decent living in college, and you know, we went nine and four the next year. Thirty thousand four we times went, a year. We went, we went nine I'm and four six the figures. next year. So if the NCAA wants to take my fucking nine and four season away and my Chick Fil A bowl against Duke, fucking blow me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, what, if the, what if the NCAA said, "Hey, we're taking your." We're taking your shit away. You're I, a Heisman. I never took a dollar um, until after I won the Heisman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, he's got a future. He's got a bright future. That's a fact. <laughs> and I think my fact. statute of limitations are up, so you can blow me again. <laughs> <laughs> you can blow me again. How's how's the wheel? How is it's she? good, dude. It's fucking hurting right now. Is this your first major on? major surgery? First only surgery. I got my tonsils out though when I was 21, so I was kind of a lie. <laughs> so that got, shit was brutal, dude. I lost like 25 pounds. Really? Yeah. I got out with with no broken bones, no no surgery. Nothing. No, nah, never. That's a that was a big part of it for me too. I was That's starting to get a lot of concussions at the end though. Were you really? Which was bad. I got my ass knocked out in Canada. Um, going for the goal line, wake up like four linemen picking me up a couple minutes later. I'm like trying to run off the field like I was trying to run down Broadway last night. <laughs> Sideways, Dizzy bat, dude. It looked quick. <laughs> looked quick. Looked Sorry. good. Looked yeah. good from my angle. Yeah, this is my first surgery. It ha it's been way harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. When I first got, I was like, man, four months. I'm going to get clear. I'm going to fuck this thing up. Yeah. It's not been that road at all. It's been way harder. Been that one. It's like, yeah, hey, sit back. I hey, guess you got it. I'm yeah, fucking you, up, you're dude. Up, baby. It's Brutal. the best one though. Georgia I do boo. love a Georgia boo. Smooth. Yeah. Talk about them. Oh, and we up? All right, ladies and gentlemen. God, my fucking leg time. It's like back here. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of things that we love in this world. All right, we love a nice suit. All right, we love the small on a woman's back. For me, <laughs> I love Georgia boot. All right, Georgia boot is the world's most comfortable boot. Georgia boot is America's hardest working boot. For 80 years, just 80, not 81, not 79. For 80 years, Georgia's been making boots that make that work as hard as you do. Tough enough for your job, cool enough for everything else. You want to go down Broadway, get a little concussy, wobbling around? Yeah. Those things should keep your ankle stable. You know what I'm saying? Georgia boot makes super good looking and super comfortable boots. So comfortable. Wait, so you'll never want to take oh, them off. That's fucking bullshit. You can't put the so comfort dash a bull. That's going <laughs> to that's going to ruin me every time. You never want to take them off. Now, I'm not so sure. Listen, we're not supposed to shoot down our ads, but I don't know if people are going to want to wear these when you're sleeping. If you do, let us know. Buy us buy a Georgia boot hmm. and, and tell us. 
Hmm. Uh, I like looking good even when I'm working and, and these boots do that. Literally, sometimes I just like, hey, coach, listen, I'm going to take this two-minute drill in these Georgia boots. And he's like, hey, you're an idiot. This is actual grass. And I'm like, listen, buddy, you see how comfortable these are? No, I can't, but they look awesome and they're comfortable too, I say. These boots hold up in any conditions without sacrificing comf- comfort, dude. You're in Green Bay in December. You're on that ice. Boom. You can wear the Georgia boot. Uh, highlight another one, dude. Do you want me to read all these? Jesus. Uh, it has comfortable technology for an athlete shoe packed with a great looking boot. Highlight another one. Uh, George Boot offers the best working boot, wedges, logger, and loggers around. Whether you need a waterproof boot, steel toe, soft toe, square toe, met guard, non puncture shank, shank, uh, non slip sole, they've got it, dude. You go to jail, get these boots, dude. Uh, head over to georgiaboot.com, use code BUSSIN, B U S S I N, for 20% off. That's a big deal, dude. 20% off. Also, Georgia Boot, per Prez's request, you need to take this logo and put it on a hat because it's pretty sick, dude. Put a little patch on it, nice little trucker piece, maybe a rope over across. Yeah. We'll sell them. Yeah, we love that. Yeah, but we need royalties because yeah. we don't get free shout outs around here, boys. <laughs> Man, you crushed it. You crushed that one. Yeah, I was nervous. Dude. I know. I, it got I can feel like kind middle. of the four of us getting a good friendship, and I was yeah. like, don't ruin it now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I respect Alex that. for keeping the highlighting there. The My only critique would be, as he gets into making the examples, we just go ahead and lower it, because <laughs> he was uh, he, he was hitting those middle ones. Hey, like, that, that, we might not get to this com- one. For dashable, that was that was trash. That is, that's worse than reduce the font size. My producer put me in a bad position there. He knows the boy can't read, dude. That's this is the best reading I've done in a while too. If you guys go back, I nailed it. Thank you very much. It's a lot. We had a couple more things. Are these the questions that were put out on Twitter? Uh, No, we didn't get any good ones. Oh man, we kind of touched on most of the stuff they were asking. Twitter's kind of ruthless like that. Uh, Which quarterback will make the biggest impact this year? Which quarterback will make the biggest impact this year, Johnny? That's a great question. I don't know. Who, who's going to start? I guess Trevor Lawrence is going to start for sure. I would not, you know, put my money on the fucking Jets. So <laughs> any of the other. I would I would say Trevor Lawrence. I, I, I like Trevor Lawrence the most out of this class. Um, I think the guy's a stud. I mean, Jacksonville's got to be good eventually, huh? Yeah. Do you still keep I, up with I, a lot I'm of it? Not. You still okay. keep up with, like, watching the quarterbacks and all that kind um, of stuff? I'm definitely more of a college football fan. I, I – I, uh, I'm definitely more of a fan these days. I don't necessarily have a team other than watch A&M and support my guys there. But, you know, I'm a fan of, you know, the real, of the guys who are like us, who mm-hmm. come on the bus and hang out and do that. But, you know, I did get a chance to watch a lot of these guys play. I think, um, you know, probably the best situation would probably have to be Mac Jones. I mean, if one program is like the other, isn't New England more, you know, like Alabama than, than anywhere else? But Mac Jones got to compete with Cam Newton. Yeah, but he might be in a good situation because you don't know how the I mean, future contract is going to work I, I out. Think, I think Justin Fields will probably get thrown into the fire a little bit in uh, in in Chicago, and and then you got Trey Lance in San Francisco, who's probably going to get the wait half a season, and then um, probably be thrown in there as well. So, you know, the guy who's going to start from opening day is, is probably has to be Trevor Lawrence, maybe Zach Wilson. I don't know who else they have in uh, getting rid of Darnold. I think he has to start, huh? Yeah. Second pick, you know, in New York, you want him to be your savior and lead you back to the to the playoffs. I mean, you think you'd have to get him in there early. You think uh, you think Tim Tebow is going to make a, make the team in Jacksonville? I would be uh, I would be surprised if he went from playing quarterback to uh, to making a team as a tight end. But I will say this: I would be very very stupid to ever doubt and say that Tim Tebow can't do something. I am a huge Tebow guy. I go to the Heisman every year because I don't fucking play football anymore and every other guy does. <laughs> yeah. So it's Tebow and me. And we're next to each other every year that I've been. And oh, he's a legend. He's a stand-up guy. He's definitely a lot different than me. It's funny as hell when you turn on ESPN, the Heisman, it's him sitting there <laughs> like this and it's me, a couple Bud Lights in. Just, you know, <laughs> go watch your butt it's next it's to you. What's up? So... <laughs> But uh, you know, I, I would think you know Urban being his guy, he didn't he didn't sign him and put him in the position to not make the team. So I would love to see a jump pass. That'd be badass if he did that. I would love to see him come back. I mean, I I remember the last memory of Tebow in the NFL for me is uh, is I, I feel like the game winner to Demarius Thomas on the slant against the Steelers in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. You know, that's a that's a that's a playoff win that a, you know a lot of other quarterbacks who are making a lot of money you know can't say that they have under their belt. No. 
playoff win. It's hard to bet against Tebow. You're right. He I'm does have a work ethic like crazy. Though. That's what I'm saying. He's got like, he, the dude's about it. Dude, he's, he's it's like, huge. He's jacked. He's yeah. strong. He's athletic enough. Like the guy obviously wants, if, he, if he's doing this, he wants to go in there and grind it out and try and get better. The hardest thing I think is that's a lot of years off from really getting. No doubt. No and doubt. Like, hat placement and getting your right hand around the block on an outside zone type of thing. Now, I don't think that's what he's in there for, but you also can't have a one dimensional tight end in the NFL where he just runs routes and does things like that. And I'm, I don't think he's I, quick I, enough to. I, I don't, I don't just know. be a route runner. I, I don't know. The tight end game in the NFL has yeah. changed as drastically as any position in the league. I feel like just there's some real motherfuckers running routes at tight end right now. Like the the guy in Oakland, Waller, Waller, Waller like that yeah. guy is Bussin. is, un- Bussin is unbelievable. They're just getting bigger, faster, and quicker, and their catch radiuses are huge. I never really saw Tebow as being that huge guy who will go out and make some plays, but I, I think. You know, I, I hope he makes it. I hope he does too. He's going in there to fucking block too, like taking shots to the mouth against these freak DNs like Miles Garrett fucking, and shit I don't, every I don't week. I want a wide fucking nine technique and I'm fucking playing tight end for my first game. Like, who the fuck wants to go block that? <laughs> and you're a quarterback I, you in don't your even past want life. Block I, I, don't, I, I hate having to block a wide nine with a tight end. That's brutal. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, that's tough. Like, dude, yeah, blocking it. those DNs are hard, dude. You put a guy that's like relatively the same weight. Mm. Those tight ends have a hard hey, job. Give me like a like you get them off the ball a little bit. Give me a little chip. Let me help my tackle out, yeah. bust out in the flat, and catch the ball. Let Tebow do his thing. I think that's a no brainer. Yeah. No brainer. But as far as like stretching the field vertical and doing some things that you have to do in the NFL, it's tight end position gets asked to do a fucking a lot. And Urban Meyer's offense is not a whole lot of they're not running a lot of tight ends out there. Not a lot of twelve. Not a lot of thirteen. Mm-mm. I mean, if he's going to run the same thing he did at Ohio State or anywhere else, he's been all day. right all day long. And so. Now, then Tebow has to be a receiving tight end. You know what I'm saying? Well, so I, 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 I should have I'm kind of shocked by the, the outrage over the signing. I was going to ask this. you about and, that. And I've, I've been really shocked about it. I mean, are I you surprised, though, no, by the outrage? Surprised. This it's world shocking, that we live but it's in not now, surprising. the world is getting really, 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 really fucking soft. And it's changing a lot in the fact of, like, it's just wild, wild times. Tebow went, did his TV, did his thing. He's always been in the good graces. The guy's never said a bad word about anybody that I know of in, in general. his life, ever. The guy's been stand up. Stopped playing ball, didn't get another opportunity. Went and did his TV stuff. Did a great baseball, job minor with league college baseball. game day. Did the baseball thing. People were pissed at him because he was taking a roster spot there. Hey, newsflash. Sometimes people get things that they may not be directly in line for, but it happens. It's big business. Shit happens. Get over it. It's also networking too. It's not what you know. The, yeah, exactly. If anybody else other than Urban Meyer gets that job, Tebow's not there. He's not there. But it it, it, it works that way. Mm-hmm. Hey, those guys win one, two national titles. They're still friends to this day. Uh, before Urban got the job, I saw him in Scottsdale playing golf one day, and you know you can tell just what kind of guy he's been. The same guys from when I you know knew Urban from my time in college and got to be around him a little bit, like. He's just loyal to his guys. I guarantee you a lot of people on that staff in Jacksonville are going to be former Gators, former Ohio State. Mm-hmm. And and that's the same with any coach in the NFL. Vrabel were to go to a different spot right now. It brings his guys with him. Every time. Mm-hmm. And every coach in the league does. Everybody's got their boys that come on and get another three-year, $4 million deal that's guaranteed even if you're, even if you're cut type of thing. So guys – are loyal to their guys. It is what it is. If you're a good bro, anyway. Yeah. Bro ship. He was just saying that hey, bro ship, dude. Vrabel secretary. Stretch. He fucking yeah. goes around Stretch with him everywhere. Stretch is wherever Vrabel goes. Yeah, no question. Yeah. Does Vrabel so. just fuck? Is he the, the guy, the man? <laughs> he fucks. Um, <laughs> Vrabel is the. Vrabel, Vrabel is the. But Vrabel got to be the alpha in the room. Yeah, Vrabel's you know Vrabel got to be, yeah. Have you he, challenged him? Yeah, and it, it doesn't go well because it, it just doesn't says, work out in your shit. way. Because like, he says, like, Things that aren't funny, but then it's like, well, well, maybe if you block that guy on third down, I'm like, well, dude, hey, listen, like, <laughs> yeah, he's talking about a sack right now, dude. Like, three weeks when, ago, when we had him on, like, I wasn't on the team, I was oh, fucking God free damn, dude, he murdered Will, and we're both we're both sitting here. I think when I say it was in July of 19, so I was just chilling. But Braves just bodying me up, and 
Terry's like, Will, you got to say something. I'm like, what do I fucking say? Yeah. Because I know I was like, I didn't play a whole lot for him. Right. So he can body bag me even more if I want to come after it was, him. It was right. tough to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're just watch there. your friends get hit by a car over and over again. It's hard. <laughs> You're going to back was... up and run him over again? <laughs> he put that thing in yeah. reverse. He hit that poor bastard, dude. And anytime Taylor's are around each other, like when we are on the team together, like he's got his jokes in front of everybody. Yeah. He loves bringing, he loves this podcast. He loves bringing it up. Yep. He's one of he the He loves boys. bringing it up in team meetings. Mm. And then he loves saying, I don't give a shit about your podcast, Taylor, but then why do you keep bringing it up? Yeah, you know? yeah we'd yeah. be late in the year and he'd be like, let's check on what our social media manager's up to today and yeah. put, pull my shit up. You're sitting there asshole tight like, God, I hope the yeah. boys laugh. Can or, we just talk about the keys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. About the keys to victory yeah. today, how to beat the Ravens. Or whatever. <laughs> it seems, it seems like you guys have a good dynamic in the locker room, though. It seems like Dude, you the guys Titans. are fucking having a blast out there and that's fun. That's fun to see from, that's from afar. That's just me turning on the games on fucking Sundays and being that it also helps when Derrick Henry runs the ball like a fucking freight train. House. Yeah. Yes, bro. 2014, 2015, two of the more miserable years yeah, of my life. Three and we're... Two and 14, three but and recently, 13. recently, though. And then, but like the locker room we got, like dude, the, the, the dudes we have, you would love it. You go in there and no one, like, I don't know, I feel like people care, but like not enough to like get on. You can be whoever you want yeah. there. Everyone's going to accept you. Our locker room's dope. The bro ship's nice. The bro, <laughs> the yeah, bro ship's yeah, nice. Definitely got a lot, nice. a lot, yeah, of, different, a lot of different characters in the, uh, in, in the locker room. How's Tannehill been fitting in Compared to like Mariota and the guys. In the he back. owned that thing. As soon as he was starting, I remember, uh, I don't remember who his first start was. It was after the Broncos game. I don't remember who we played after that, but I remember walking in, him and Arthur Smith are sitting at a table by themselves and I walk by him and Tannehill's like, I don't want this play. Take this out. I want this, change this to a, sl like he's like he's telling Arthur what he's like, what he likes and doesn't like. And for me, I'm like, that fires me up. Cause I know when you're calling that play, the OC knows that he likes it. He knows he likes it. He knows where the ball is going relative. And so he's been awesome, dude. The guy is the guy's top notch. I'm a huge fan of his. Yeah. I think um had to be happy to see Mariota ball a little bit last year. Dude, when he came yeah. In. That was oh, badass. Marcus is like the nicest dude ever. We both committed to Oregon at the exact same time. We were really? at the same camp together and then kept in touch over the years. And uh he re he really is a legend. Top notch, classy fucking dude. Classy dude. He he's he's another one of those guys, like doesn't say a bad thing about anybody, mm -hmm. works super hard. Got a got a bad deal at the Titans. I don't know. I think he's going to be successful. I just it was just tough here for whatever reason. I don't yeah. know if he got in his own head or. I think he had a lot of success here. That are, he's had rem memorable games coming back against Kansas City, uh, playoff win. Like he's going to have things that Titans fans remembers him forever. But I think two maybe next year two three years from now he's going to be a starting quarterback he's going to be a stud i agree i mean i bet he's, he's probably in, in that time he'll probably be around the age we are right now maybe 30 years old mm -hmm. he's got you know five six seven eight years of good football left i've always been a big fan of him the guy 60 in the bank the guy, the guy can really fucking move he's made good money he's a great fucking dude I, i've loved the time i've got to be around him so you guys had a bunch of different OCs over the first couple of years when he was here. Yeah, too, huh? we had a yeah, had a different one every year. I yeah, think, that's it's, it's that's the the hardest thing that a lot of people don't know about the NFL is being a young guy and him coming from Oregon. And this and this just happens with spread offenses coming from college to what we do in the NFL. You don't do a ton of stuff with protections or mm -hmm. you know when you get to the league. I need to know exactly why you're squeezing down and this guy comes free or if you're going to kick out to it and this guy's going to come and hit me in my chops. There's just the level of uh, football knowledge you have to have is just something you don't necessarily get from a read option spread kind of offense. And if you get a young guy in, you're changing offensive coordinators, you know, every single year learning new verbiage and terminology. Um, it, it's it's historically tough on any young guy who comes from that situation. Yeah. I think that's why Tannehill's had, Tannehill's had so much success here is dude. He just seems like he's got, he knows the everything you guys are running here. Tannehill was running the first day when I got to Texas A&M. Really? So with coach Sherman, Mike Sherman was our head coach and we were running red jet two and three jet, same play pass, yep. the whole, the exact same. He thing. is a gangster. At that. And then when he got drafted, he went to Miami and his offensive coordinator was Mike Sherman. Really? So he has been in the exact same system pretty much for almost his entire time. And and he, he was really, really good at it when we were at AM and and I was sucking my thumb in the back of a fucking meeting room. And, and I'm sure he's only gotten better now because so he's a smart dude. He gets that thing out too. As an offensive lineman, you get that ball out. That's love. Yeah. Super. Cause it's been a couple of times. So you're like, Hey, I'll yeah. appreciate you. <laughs> you whiff a little bit. Some dudes, miles Garrett coming around the corner, something like that. 
Yeah. Tanny, he takes a shot, but there's no sack. <laughs> stat sheet looks good on my side. Let's jog down. Nice keep, completion. Keep, keep it clean. Keep no it clean question, on my stat dude. sheet. Yeah. Um, I think that's... Well, fuck, I appreciate you guys. Yeah, yeah that man, was thank solid. Thank you guys for, for having us on. You know, we didn't want pleasure. to come in here and... You know, just bombard the thing with Chug Buds and our own podcast type of talking, but <laughs> oh, you know, no. I figured uh, I have a couple beers a day, come on the bus and hang with the boys and then uh, have a good little chat. This is how it should be. Have boys, you had, a, have you had beers today? What? I've already been to Broadway. You're sick. <laughs> I rode a scooter back to uh, where we went and got those vodka OJs the other day and got that same meal again. It was fucking badass. Really? Pinewood Social? Yeah, hey, that's a good spot, spot dude. Spot. Got that's, say, that's Socialite City right there, I got dude. the steak and eggs. Is I took, it? I took oh, a... Yeah. Uh, Took a bird scooter from the Virgin Hotel, rode it through downtown. I was fucking cruising all morning. That's like, awesome, dude. I what's, love your, this city. what's your spot in Broadway right now? Like, where's your number one? FGL? Nah, I, I like the stage. stage hey, the is stage? Kind of, the stage is kind of kicked back and laid back for me. Every time we've gone in there, we've had a blast. Everywhere else has kind of we've, been a little we've, over we've the been top. At, we've been everywhere. Florida Georgia Do you Line see where was fine. Was that where Mike's spot is? It's it's like yeah, it's like it's first like the rock, rooftop. I'm not gonna say where it's at. I know. Yeah. I think I know exactly where Elite, it's at. Elite, dude. Yeah. It's um. I think me and Derek, you know that like Kroger health thing me and Derek did a photo shoot for? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's in that exact the, spot. The Taco Bell Cantina yeah. where you can get a Baja Blast margarita. I'm all about dude, that. Baja Blast used to hit <laughs> something What are we talking about? Dude. You know, that was real life. The guy's sitting there playing his guitar like, yo, what's up, Taco Bell? Yeah. Fucking go like make, your way, make your way, make your yeah, way, get dude. a taco and a, and a margarita. I love it. Taco Bell t- Cantina. Highly recommend it. Taco yeah. Bell Cantina. No free shout outs. No. Hey, no, no the no, stage there. rips. I'll be there. I don't know if the stage still does this, but they play like Blink-182 and like Good Child. Hit them like a... Old yeah. alternative punks, dude. Yeah. I love no, that's my favorite it. music. We, I think it. we, I think we've touched soil just about every bar on Broadway. Good, it's been nice. Yeah, we want, we want a good run. It's we wanted the dark. I ones, try though. and keep up, dude. I'm like, fuck, Mike's out again. He's at another. It's been spot. a good one. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I think I'm retiring off into the abyss for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got, I got to finish some music here, and then where I'll are you go. going next? Austin. We got, got a spot in Lake Travis. It's gonna be nice. That's where we just were, man. Oh, really? You were just yeah. there this weekend. Yeah, yeah for the bachelor party. Yeah, I do that. Did you guys get after it or what? Oh, we got after it. Yeah, we got. We had a good time. My brother, he's sitting back there. There's about there's about eight of us. But yeah, it was. Uh, my voice was completely gone on Saturday. It's tough. You got, a nice, was, uh, you got a nice smoky tone. Who was yeah, in the thank hot you. tub? I appreciate with that. The fucking Yo, thunderstorm. That my was boy, uh, as hell. Yeah, that my was. boy Kenny Farkas. Like this. We're in like the eye of the storm, dude. Like it just starts going off because we we went out in downtown Austin for the first half of the day, and then we're like, all right, let's go recharge for a few hours, then we'll come back out at night mm-hmm. on Rainy Street, Sixth Street, and uh, this storm just starts beating our ass, dude. I'm talking. I mean, you see the trees blowing sideways. All the patio furniture is lost, like it's gone. Uh, the storm. house starts low key flooding a little bit. <laughs> like the fan That's is hilarious. on it. The fan is on inside, and water slinging around. Like it was. Uh, the dock, uh, the deck to the boat, mm-hmm. the dock, the big ass cable snaps and it floats like 20 yards down the water, bro. It, it was fucking insane. It's a bit of a deal wow. right there. I mean, it's a good old Texas storm. He's just yeah, and not the, hey, And in the middle of that too, it was hailing. That's why he's like covering his face right now. Because it's fucking hailing just and he's just taking a hail. Yeah. He's a psychopath, huh? Yes, bro. He was I going through I some shit. <laughs> hey, we love a good full send around yeah, here for sure. yeah. But uh, I love that. Appreciate yeah, no, it. I'm headed there no, next. We're going to be fun. But yeah, man, Nashville definitely is... It's up there. I it's like this there. place a lot. There's something. There's something to be said about the vibe. That, like the, you, you know, I've been lived in New York and other places. You know, a lot of this is obviously a lot smaller than a New York City. But that feeling right where I'm at right now is like, you know, just you walk out. Like I come down the elevator, it's just you're in the trenches. People are going nuts. You know, <laughs> you're but in the trenches. <laughs> it's it's like a celebratory place. You know, people are coming here for bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, birthday parties. There's just feeling. There's always like, a concert. There's always yeah, a game. There's always something going there's like on. A feeling in the air that's like more positive leaning. I just like that. You know, I'm like a positive. Yeah, there's yeah, nothing I love vibes, more than dude. going into like a random city or a place I haven't been a ton and just getting an immediate just boost of energy and a vibe where you're like just want to go out and fucking have a blast. You guys are yeah. boosting Nashville, dude. I like that. No doubt. Yeah, yeah, Nashville yeah. fucks. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Subscribe, review, rate five stars, follow us everywhere. We love you all. We appreciate you, big hugs, tiny kisses. Make sure you guys follow Ball Don't Lie. Go yeah, follow to Ball too. Don't Go Lie. Listen. You guys do Much have some conversations. Yeah. I fuck with them. Thank you, man. Much love, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Glad to have you, dude. That was awesome. Cheers, boys. Big shout out to you guys. If you enjoyed this episode and love and support Bustin' with the Boys, Go to whatever podcast platform you're on and subscribe to us. Leave a review, rate five stars. If you're already subscribed, unsubscribe and resubscribe again. It helps the boys climb the charts. And again, 
We can't, we wouldn't be doing this and can't do this without you guys and all of your support. We also have a YouTube channel. If you like, if you'd like to watch our show or these episodes, they're on YouTube at Bustin' with the Boys. We're also on social media at Bustin' WTB. You can follow us everywhere. Go buy our merch. You guys know that whole deal. But thank you so much. We are forever grateful for you. The biggest of hugs and tiniest of kisses for the boys always and forever.